Welcome to Ken Strong Stadium, where tonight we have an exciting state championship final matchup between the New Britain Golden Hurricanes and the Greenwich Cardinals. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Margiotta along with Scott Gustafson. Scott, tonight we have a New Britain Golden Hurricane team that comes in off an impressive performance a couple days ago. Justice Harrison, what else could you say about him? Three touchdowns, 228 yards, an unbelievable performance. However, Neil Johnson seemed to lose some of his confidence in the second half. They're going to need that tonight. They certainly are, Steve. Last game, Johnson, 8 for 13, 133 yards in the first half. But the second half, he simply fell apart and his team lost confidence in him. He was only 1 for 4, and they strictly went to the run from there. And obviously, New Britain needs to do much more, but their defense luckily bailed them out last time. For this Greenwich Cardinal team, they come in also on a roll. They're 10 and 0 off of a 33 to 7 beating of Naugatuck. They come in, they run a very similar offense to West Haven which should seem to help New Britain. You would think so right away. It is. It's going to be a benefit for New Britain. Number one, they had three days. Both teams had three days to prepare for this. So obviously New Britain's got the upper edge. They've seen that offense before last time with West Haven. So they should control the ball. But hey, Coach Albanzio over there in Greenwich says they might have to throw a little bit more. They know that Gren uh, New Britain might be a little weaker in the middle of the field. Yeah, a couple sophomores back there. They did well in last game, however, Andrew Jackson and Josh Jen Jennings. Well, you ready for this one tonight or what? I certainly am. Exciting, crowds excited. Join us for the opening kickoff right after this. program is underwritten in part by the Guidus Milk and Ice Cream Company based in New Britain, Connecticut. Thank you, Guidus, for making this telecast possible. This program is underwritten in part by a grant from the City of New Britain. Thank you, New Britain, for helping make this telecast possible. Welcome back to West Haven, Connecticut, and Ken Strong Stadium. We're awaiting the opening coin toss and our national anthem. First now, both captains, both teams' captains, walking out to the center of the field. And we'll have the opening coin toss for, with you, or for you, rather. And, Scott, you can feel the excitement in the air coming up, walking up into the booth. We're on the Greenwich side tonight, and they are just pumped up. They definitely are, Steve. It's, uh, it's, it's a great atmosphere to be. Uh, obviously, Greenwich has been here before. We talked about New Britain also uh, under Jack Cochran now for the first year, but he has uh, made many trips to these championship games in the past. As a Bloomfield coach, and we're going to lay out here for a moment. Hopefully, we'll be able to pick up referee, referee Barry Fowler. Okay, it's a big game. I expect you as captains and leaders of your team to emphasize sportsmanship. Football is a physical and emotional game. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to knock down other people. My expectation is whether they got a red shirt on or a white shirt on is you're going to put your hand out and you're going to help that guy up because it may be you that gets knocked down next play, all right? That's sportsmanship and that's leaders of your team. That's how we're going to do it tonight, all right? Help me control your team and we'll be in good shape. Just so you see it, we've got a head and a tail. All right, down here again, a head and a tail. One more time over here. We have heads and tails, so we can see it here. Heads and tails, all right? As the visitor and you're a captain on this side, I'm assuming you're the spokesperson, correct? I'm going to ask you to call it either heads or tails in the air. I'll catch it. If I drop it, we pick it up, do it all over again. Based on what happens, we'll make some decisions, okay? In the air. Heads is called. Tails it is. You've won the toss. You want to defer. Greenwich has won the toss, and we'll defer. I'll assume you want the ball. All right, you want the ball. Which goal would you want to defend? Slide your backs over here. White, don't go too far. Stay right here with me. Turn around and face red. Turn around and face him. Come on over here, fellas. Come on up here. Come on up here, fellas. Receive here. Shake hands. Have a great game. Wow, that was that's Mills Lane like. Mills Lane like on the call. Referee Barry Fowler. Obviously a control referee, and they're gonna need that in the state championship. You don't want anything uh, to go 
uh, Array, you want to make sure that the referee is in control, and he definitely seems like he can control referee. Absolutely went to the point of showing the guys that the coin was not double-sided. Very important. He didn't leave anything up for the imagination there, Steve. He definitely said, hey, this is the way it's going to be. I'm mean, tight, tight ship I run here. Boom, boom, boom. Got everything right to the point. And, uh, looks like it should be a clean game here today. Very important. And now, as referee Barry Fowler got things set, here's our national anthem. Zach Zion, offensive lineman for Greenwich, uh, lost his father in the World Trade Center. We wish he and his family the absolute best. Uh, they've just basically shown how, how much they have gotten through getting in this game with as much as he had on his mind. Absolutely. And before we go any further, we wish to thank the city of New Britain for have underwritten this program. Thank you, the city of New Britain, for making this program possible and our telecast of tonight's state championship. All night, we'll have Tony Zaleski with us. Tony's down on the field. He was with us for the Bristol Eastern game, and that will add a lot of insight to our game tonight. Right now we're getting ready for the opening kickoff. As you see, a wide shot of the field, and uh, Scott, I'm a little bit surprised that they won the coin toss Greenwich and decided to kick to New Britain, because New Britain just has a, a, as we saw the other night, a very outstanding offense. You see back there is Kamla Sumafal Fanky, along with the well, it's becoming a legend in New Britain, Justice Harrison. Surprised that they, you were surprised that they won the coin toss and accepted the kickoff? Uh, not necessarily. Both teams here actually are known basically for their really, really strong de defense. New Britain comes into the to the year number one in the state, while Greenwich is number two. New Britain giving up only 60, excuse me, 73 points all season long, and Greenwich is second right there behind them with only 75. They're both outstanding defensive teams. And here's our opening kickoff of to tonight's state championship. Sal Kalmfau, thank you. Picks the ball up at the 18. Has a hole to his left. Brought down by number 10, Daniel Anderson. Anderson brings Sal Falfanke down at about the 26-yard line. And had a little bit of a hole there and got good yardage on a ball that was kicked down to about the 15. He did. He made a great move beginning. Uh, he did a nice little juke move around number 17, Mike McLeod. Then opened up another hole off to the left side and able to get another seven or eight yards out of that one. And, of course, quarterbacking for New Britain will be Neil Johnson. And Neil Johnson, who, as we talked about, lost a little bit of his confidence. Something we're going to look for immediately is to see if Neil Johnson is going to come out throwing the ball. Of course, he has great Justice Harrison in the backfield. Justice Harrison, the lone back. He gets the ball to his left. No, fakes the ball, throws out to his right. He has John Plefka at the 35. Plefka gets by one, gets by two, down to the 40. Brought out of bounds, and it lets you really going to mark it, the 34-yard line. Big 88, John Plefka, 6'9", 250 pounds. And Neil Johnson trying to get his confidence right off the right off the beginning play here. Johnson with a great job here. He fakes the pitch to Harrison, but you know, hey, they run the ball a lot. They love to. Harrison's a great thing. Nice little roll out there by Johnson. Look, he finds the tight end number 88 wide open right there. And for 6'9", 250, this man's got some speed. And that's definitely what helped him carry him down inside the Greenwich 34-yard line. Almost a block in the back there along about the 50-yard line. But as you said, Harrison has been a great decoy all year, and he was at that point. Garza's in motion. Ball pitched out to Harrison. Harrison out to his right. Gets through one hit. Gets to about the 23-yard line. Looks like it might mark it at the 24. Ball was pitched out there. And you're going to see Mike Davis and also Don Madigan in motion all day, all night tonight. Great job in motion. Also, nice job there by the offensive guard, John Renault, who came up with a nice block. It looked like it was only going to be about a gain of three or four, but he turned that into a gain of about nine yards. And it looks like they might take an official timeout here for a measurement, Steve. 
That's referee Ben Barry Fowler, excuse me. Let's do the honors for the rest of our officials here tonight for this very important state championship final. Umpire Frank Krugel, linesman Paul Rossetti, line judge Bill Vesta, Vass Ataro, and of course back judge Matt Fagan. Let's go right now down to Tony. Tony, what do you have for us? Steve, thank you and good evening. Uh, not a shock that they went, New Britain went play action right off the bat with uh, using their secret weapon, John Plefka, with only 19 catches on the season. Greenwich probably wasn't keying on him. A couple of quick notes. With Greenwich winning the toss, they took to defend the north goal. There's about a 15 mile an hour wind coming out of the north. Uh, that will play a factor into the New Britain passing game as well as the kicking game. The field's a little bit of wet, but New Britain is not affected by that as of yet. Back to you. Good insight. Tony back to live action. Harrison breaks a tackle. Another one. 15-10. Put it on the board. New Britain goes in, and they take a quick 6 to nothing lead. Justice Harrison leaves, picks up where he left off the other night. A quick 6 on the board for New Britain. I'm telling you, Steve, the first time I've seen Harrison out here, and I thought he was caught maybe three, four yards right at the line of scrimmage. It looked like it was just a big cluster, big cluster of white shirts, and just that's where the blocking really came through, and Harrison just put on the speed and showed that he has breakaway potential. Scott, I'm glad you're getting a chance to see Harrison because he, right off the bat, you see what kind of back he is, breaks through a couple uh, tackles, goes in for the quick six. Now Mike Garces on for the extra point. Garces, the ball put down, right through the uprights. Just like that, the Golden Hurricanes take a quick 7 to nothing lead. And just a little simple pitch play to the left. Harrison breaks through the initial line of the Greenwich Cardinals and goes in for the touchdown. A 7 to nothing lead, and Coach Jack Cochran, you talked about him earlier. Exactly what he wanted, a quick, quick lead in the state championship game. This is nothing new for Coach Cochran. As we said before, this is ninth straight time to the playoffs. The previous eight have been with Bloomfield, and he had a run of four straight uh, state championships and he really, really goes for offense. As you can see here, a great pitch right there. Harrison breaks outside. That's what you gotta love to see. Number one, Lewis Pratt's a wide receiver showing great blocking there, just turns the corner and then it's nothing but green field for him. Also, Elfrin Keyless out on the left side too, and great job all across the board there for New Britain. Now they're getting ready to kick off and get back to live action. After the quick touchdown, Garces will get ready to kick off. It was a 24-yard run for Harrison. And now Garces comes back down at about the 15-yard line to receive. Looks like number 32. That's Brian McClellan. He's back on the 15. Hard to see who the other person is. We'll get that in a moment. But Garces getting ready to kick, waiting for the referee's whistle. Fowler gives him the whistle. Also back is Charlie Cole. Ball squib kicked along the ground, picked up at about the 24-yard line, breaks through one tackle. Finally brought down, McClellan brought down a combination of tacklers. Nate Jones was the first player there, and he'll get credit for it. Also along on the tackle was Andrew Madigan. You wonder about the squib kick. One thing it does do, it helps get the defense down there quicker. Uh, you saw the ball bouncing around there. The quicker New Britain team gets down there right away. And uh, Nate Jones, you said, was the first man to tackle, and definitely other support there. Good pursuit by the Golden Hurricane to see him break through the initial line. And you're right, Nate Jones, first one to get there. At quarterback for the Greenwich Cardinals. And they're going to run a wing formation, so there's going to be a lot of running here tonight. Number 16, Jim Cabrera. Number 85 in motion. That's Clyde McGraw. Gets down to set position. Now they're going to run the scissors play we saw all last week, or a couple days ago. That was number 31 on the carry, Stephen Longo. Longo looks like he picked up maybe a yard at the most, but I set up a second and long. Talk about that New Britain defensive line. Not only are they quick and fast, but they are they're large as well. I mean, two things, and they're also going to do a lot of shifting. You got to watch that New Britain defense. They shift quite a bit, and that really, you know, sets the other team. Hey, what, what's going on? You really got to just focus, and they got to be able to see what they do have coming at them. They hide their inside linebackers well, as also. Absolutely, and Andrew Jackson, two outstanding sophomores, Andrew Jackson and Josh Jennings, were standouts in the game the other night against West Haven. The ball handed again this time to McClellan. McClellan to the outside. Madigan misses on the tackle. He breaks out of another tackle. All the way down for a first down. He broke out a tackle of Marcus Mitchell. Got down to the 49-yard line, and that is a Greenwich first down. Brian McClennan, great job there of speed and power together. As you can see him here, sending in motion, comes around the left side. First man to get over there for Britain is number four, that's eight, Andrew Madigan. Absolutely just breaks the tackle, McClellan does, and just comes down, comes down through. 
many defenders there for New Britain, and uh, no one just can catch him there. Tough job there with open field tackles. And Andrew's brother, Don, was a big factor in the win against West Haven. Ball handed again underneath McClellan. McClellan looks like he got three yards, maybe four at the most. And that, I'm sorry, that was Longo, I believe, on the carry there. Catches, makes it about three yards. And again, West Haven the other night, they had Butler, they had Dancy, and they had the three, three back set. We're going to see pretty much the same thing here tonight, the three back set. Ball run up the middle that time, only a couple yards. That's what New Britain's going to be. You talk they about be ready for that all night. You do. You talk about Steve Longo. He leads the Greenwich team with 20 touchdowns this season. But don't be afraid. There's a few other people that do run, as well as running back Charlie Cobb. And this time, look at who it is. It is number 31. He's running down to the 25, the 20. He's being chased by Sal Falfanti. He tries to strip the ball. He's all the way down to the three-yard line. Just as you're talking about it, Scott, Steve Longo breaks through the line, the interior line of New Britain, gets all the way down to the two-yard line, eventually brought down by Sal Falfanti. Right as I start talking about 20 touchdowns during the season, it looks like he wants number 21. The thing with the wing offense here, you never know which back it's going to go to. Longo just gets some great blocking straight up the middle, and then it's pure speed here as he tries to break to the outside, but cannot be brought down. Too far down. That's Madigan down there by the four-yard line. Excuse yep. me, number two. Sam Falfanti, who did a great job of closing after getting beaten early on. Was sucked in, but was able to get back to make the tackle. Ball faked this time, and then underneath, Longo again, this time he got hit hard. That fake fooled me. But a nice job by defense. Josh Jennings in on the tackle along with Marcus Mitchell. And Mitchell was another big player in the game against West Haven. Ola Bessie also in on the play. See there, Ola Bessie, the first guy in there, just great job. He just does not give up. He starts to get by him, but he just wraps him up and wrestles him down. Sets up a second down, ball on the five yard line. 8.37 here remaining in the opening quarter. Steve Margiata, Scott Gustafson are holding up main crew here for the state championship. Ball handed outside this time. Down to the three, the two. Not in at about the one yard line. That's Charlie Kolb that time. Kolb gets down. Looks where they're going to mark it. Maybe, let's see. At about the one yard line. Almost got in for the touchdown. Let's see a replay. Kolb with 254 yards in the win against Naugatuck last week. Just absolutely just breaks right. Nice little stutter step there. Tries to go inside to pick up his blocker, but can't quite get through as he uh, almost waited too long. His block was going down there by number 51. That's Robert Natalie. And Ola Bessie in on the tackle again. Now a third down. They can get a first down here. Let's see. The quarterback sneak. And there is a touchdown single. They're in. Greenwich answers New Britain's opening touchdown by Harrison by answering by scoring themselves. Cabrera with the simple quarterback sneak, seven to six. We talked about this is a team that just likes to run, run, run. And the, Coach Albonzio knows that that New Britain's defense, they're gonna shift on you, they're gonna do this, and he thought, hey, maybe we will do a little passing. But you see there, that whole drive strictly with the run, Steve. That's right, they stuck with what worked all season for them. And there, Cabrera, the simple quarterback sneak, takes it in. The extra point attempt, blocked at the line. Good job by New Britain. That's number 52 on the kick. He's been kicking all year for him, Zach Ostrowski. Good job by New Britain. They did that last game against West Haven. They were, they were able to get through the line. Blocked a couple punts earlier on in the year as well. You see, great job coming on the outside. No block really coming through. I believe that was Marcus Mitchell, Scott, who got a piece of that. But there could have been a number of players there who got through. Mitchell, nice inside swim move there. Just breaks through, untouched, gets his hand on the ball. And uh, that, that could be big coming up later in the game, Steve. Tony has something for us. Tony. Guys, down here in the field, there's an extraordinary buzz of how these two top-rated defenses have just been cut through over the last seven minutes of this game. The wing T versus Eric Cochran has been nothing short of exciting. Uh, you saw the Ostrowski missing the extra, extra point. Excuse me. That is the seventh block kick for New Britain this year. Their special teams are nothing short than outstanding. Uh, could be a big factor in the game. And speaking to Coach Cochran real quick before the game, if it comes down to a field goal, he has confidence in Mike Garces from 35 and in. Back up to you. Yeah, thank you, Tony. Garces has a, a foot uh, unlike most in high school football, and that's big when you get down, especially in key games like this, playoff games or championship games. You need a, uh, you, it's nice to have a kicker who can get you those three points late in the game. Uh, of course, Tony Zaleski will be with us all night. And as he said, Jack Cochran's not used to seeing this defense. His New Britain defense has been solid all year. And as Tony mentioned, seven, seventh block kick of the year. That's something you don't see at high school teams often. 
that's what puts the special in special teams right there, Steve. It really does. You really count on your special teams just to get down there, make good tackles, not give up anything big. But when they come up with something as big as that, that can really set the tone of the game right there. And back to receive again, Harrison, along with sound foul fainty. You see referee Barry Fowler conferring, I believe that's with Paul Rossetti. Don't know exactly what they're conferring about. It may be about a clock issue. We're not exactly sure. The score here, seven to six. You see them huddled there at about the 30-yard line of New Britain. 7.50 remaining here in the first quarter. Beautiful night for football. My partner and I had a little trouble getting in here. The parking was not the, uh, not the best. <laughs> I've had easier times getting into Shea Stadium, or Yankee Stadium, but we made it here in time, and just in time to have a, a great time broadcasting this game tonight. State championships doesn't get any better than this in high school football. It certainly doesn't. It's a beautiful night for the first night of December here. Very mild for this time of year. Temperatures today somewhere in the mid-60s. Very unusual, I think. In some areas of Connecticut, we broke records, 69 being the highest back in 1908. That's what you get for waking up at 7.30 in the morning. I have nothing better to do than watch the weather report. And now Coach Cochran calling his team over. I believe there was a timeout called. We're trying to see if that's exactly what was what happened. We don't know if there was a clock problem, but in any event, well, hopefully Tony will be able to get us something here. Referee's timeout. Not a timeout by New Britain. Was mistaken about that. There is a referee's timeout. 7.50 remaining in the first quarter. Again, 7-6, New Britain with the lead. Just to recap, Justice Harrison scored from 24 yards out on the first drive for New Britain, went in and picked up where he left off last game. And uh, then Greenwich came right back, answered, marching down the field, using their running backs, Stephen Longo, Brian McClellan, and Charlie Kalb. Eventually... It was Jim Cabrera who snuck the ball in from the one-yard line, which brought them within one. The Cardinals within, within one. We're 7-6 here. We're going to go now down to Tony Zaleski. We'll fill us in why there is a stoppage. Tony. Uh, Steve, there's been a medical emergency here in the crowd, and the officials have spoken to both coaches, and they've stopped the game indefinitely. No exact word of what's going on, but uh, medical people are up checking on someone in the crowd. Uh, no, long, no idea how long the delay will be. Back uh, to you. Thank you, Tony. That's certainly unfortunate that at any time, but especially at this time in a state championship game, that there would be a medical emergency. We certainly hope that the person who's that has uh, befallen, gotten sick, hopefully he will get better, he or she will get better. But talking more about New Britain, and uh, we will talk more about New Britain. We're going to go to a break. We'll be back after this. Hopefully the stoppage won't be too long. We'll be able to pick up the game. Right now the score is 7-6. to six. New Britain with the early lead. We'll be back for more first quarter action right after this. a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. What is a hero? Are heroes born? Or are they made? In after-school programs, your kids will uncover hidden strengths, discover they have the power to change their future, and find the hero inside themselves. Let us know you on after-school programs in your area. Call 1-800-USA-LEARN. After-school programs. Helping kids find the hero within. And welcome back to New Britain. I'm sorry, welcome back to Ken Strong Stadium. We're so used to doing New Britain games now. I almost slipped there. Uh, medical emergency, and Scott, you have a little info and why they stopped the game. See, the reason they stopped the game is they have to find out, first of all, if they do need an EMT and they need to take an ambulance out of here, the game, by Connecticut High School rules, cannot be played without a, an ambulance present at the stadium. So that's what they had a timeout for. They had to check that out and find out what the issue was. Okay, and now after that uh, explanation, Jennings with the ball gets it, runs across the field, picked it up about the 25. Jennings got out to about the 31-yard line. Uh, not exactly sure what happened, but with them renewing... Uh, 
coming back and start play again. Hopefully that it was nothing major. But again, to recap, Harrison scored on the 24-yard burst on the first drive in the, fir in the first quarter, then a one-yard TD run by quarterback Jim Cabrera. He's made it 7-6 after the missed extra point by Ostrowski. Now we'll see what Neil Johnson does. He came out throwing in the first drive for New Britain. Let's see what he does here. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. In motion is Mike Davis. He pitches the ball. Harrison out to his left, 30-yard line, brought down. First to hit him was number 17, Dan Taylor. And then it helped out by number 65, Mike Pitasi. Also, Peter Salvatore with a nice job getting in there. He was coming back, playing the middle linebacker position. Just simply came across the right side, just absolutely waited, had him lined up in his sights, and took him right down. And getting ready here for a second down and seven. Get the ball to the 33-yard line. Short game for Harrison. If you could hold him to anything under five yards, it's, you're doing a great job. During the regular season, it was averaging 10.7 yards per carry, 10.1 yards. A fumble on the play, ball picked up by the Cardinals. Greenwich recovers the fumble. Number 83, David Ranta on the recovery. And just like that, Greenwich seizes momentum of this game. Not something Greenwich wanted to happen. They come out on the second down play and fumble the ball. And David Ranta, Johnny on the spot, picks the ball up, and now it's going to be Greenwich's ball. Not sure if it was a fumble on the exchange there, the uh, miscommunication between Hairston and, and Johnson. Now, timeout Greenwich, Coach uh, Alabasi. <laughs> and I, I Albon 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 Albonzio. I cannot butcher an Italian name. Albonzio, Coach Albonzio. Uh, wants to talk things over with his Greenwich team. As we talked about a couple days ago on Tuesday, Justice Harrison with zero fumbles on the entire season. They did have a lot of problem with the snap Neil Johnson did in the West Haven game. We also saw it in the Bristol Eastern game. Hopefully we'll be able to get a replay of that and see exactly what happened. Very unusual if Harrison fumbled that ball on his own. No fumbles again all season. We will not have a replay on that, but very unusual, and I'm sure Jack Cochran is not going to be happy about that. Turnovers are big in big games. You don't want to be the one who's going to be on the negative side of that. Especially this early in the game. Game very close, 7-6, and uh, giving up such good field position here for the uh, the Cardinals to start off with. Ball's going to be spotted around the 37, 38-yard line. And he'll take over first and 10. Jim Cabrera will be running the wing tee offense. The wing is what they saw on Thursday against West Haven. We're going to see it all night tonight. 6.57 early on here in the state championship game. Three in the backfield, of course, with the wing offense. Ball handed. Again, that's Mongo. Mongo only gets a couple yards. Much better job there by the New Britain defense. New Britain is going to have that interior line, and they're going to try to stuff the run as much as possible. See, great job here by number 52, Dom Madigan. Just meets him at the point of contact right at the line of scrimmage and actually takes him down. Talked about two things, Steve. Talked about the shifting of the defense and the size and the speed. And right there, they show both. Madigan came in inside, found the hole, met him, stood him up, and brought him right down. We'll see what to do here. Cabrera barking out signals. Almost jumped was Josh Jennings. Ball handed again to Colm. Colm gets out to the outside, 30. Inside, breaks a hole. Down to the 15, the 10. Brought down by Marcus Mitchell. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 8-yard line. Mitchell eventually brought down Cobb. And Cobb had the big run on the first drive for Greenwich. He does it here again. Gets all the way down to the 8-yard line. Nice outside-inside move there by Charlie Cobb. We talked about his last game, 254 yards against Naugatuck. And here, nice great block downfield by the tight end, number 85. That's Clyde McGraw. That's just pushes the defender outside. And Cobb is able to get inside the 10-yard line and a great effort all around. And let's give Kamla Sound Falfanke credit on that tackle. He was the one who actually grabbed and then Mitchell helped assist it on the tackle. Another timeout for Greenwich, taking a couple early. <laughs> They want to talk things over, make sure they're on the same page here. The only problem with that is, you know, second, first half, not as much an issue, but the first half, you also want to have the timeouts late in the first half when you're running on it. If you have a drive, you don't want to be out of timeouts. If you look at the crowd in the background. This place is jammed, jam-packed, as we see, unfortunately, the ambulance leaving the stadium here. Uh, we can get it from where we're in position here in the box, in the press box. 
Steve, you talked about the ambulances and how I talked earlier about well, there has to be one here present at all the time. They actually brought in an extra one here just in case something like that goes on and the game is not postponed or delayed any longer. Good point. You don't want uh, to be without one in case an emergency happens in the actual football game here out on the field. Now, first, first down and goal at the eight-yard line. The Cardinals break their huddle. After discussing things, they want to again make sure that they are on the same page here. Don't want to turn the ball over as New Britain did. Seemingly turn the momentum of this first quarter around. 5.55 remaining. The ball handed off on the outside. That's 32. McClellan. McClellan's going to go in for the touchdown. Greenwich scores. There's a flag on the play. It's in the backfield, so it could be holding on the Cardinals. We're going to wait for Barry Fowler's call. He's conferring with his officials. He's going to come over and make the call right here. I think it's going to be holding here in the offense, Steve. It is. Holding offense. So Greenwich, after the touchdown run by McClellan, get it called back. That's, again, turnovers and mistakes and penalties are some things you don't want in the state champ in any game, but in the state championship Holding. game especially. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Holding penalty, and Barry Fowler makes the call. Let's see if we can pick it up. Nice job here by the outside by number 32, Brian McClellan. And also a great block by number 60, it's Mike Fasaro. Nice outside, inside move. I hate to say bad things about Cobb, who's been doing great things all day, but I believe he was the one who committed the foul. Cobb with the infraction. The flag was thrown right near his knee, so it kind of gave it away. Sets up now a first down and goal at the 16-yard line. Ball handed off. Cobb runs the ball, hit immediately. Much better job by the New Britain defense. Number 52, Eric Olabesi. We've mentioned Olabesi. We mentioned his name a couple times already. Had a big game the other night as well. 6'3", 255 pounds. But know what? The speed gets you to the spot, and that weight actually brings him down right there. Nice job by Olabesi to move to the hole and make contact and not give up. Olabesi with a big hit. Josh Jennings, the sophomore, assisting on the tackle. And that sets up now a second down and goal on the 11-yard line. 5-12 remaining. Steve Margiata, Scott Duffelson here at Ken Strong Stadium. 7-6 lead for New Britain. However, after the turnover, Cardinals driving again. The ball handed off. It's getting to the outside. Not going to get all the way there. That's McClellan again. A little reverse play out of the wing. Ball was first handed to Cobb. Handed over to McClellan. Much better job by New Britain to get to the outside. Andrew Jackson along there with a number. Andrew Madigan there as well. Good job also by number 45. That's 35. That's Dan Perez to go to the outside. Does not give up. Absolutely sees the fake. Sees McClellan going to the outside and just goes to a spot. He does not try to go after him. He goes to the spot where he thinks he's trying to cut in the field, and that is where he's met. And we'll set up now a third down and six. Well, six, third down and goal, actually. Seven to six. New Britain with the lead. 422 remaining. Aladdin Freeman has just joined us in the booth. Bad traffic out there. We're having a hard time here in your land. Hopefully we'll get that fixed. All right. But Aladdin has joined us in the booth. Call gets the handoff out to the outside. And look at that play by Don Madigan. Don Madigan making a big play there for New Britain. Down at the 14-yard line. They lost by three yards there. Actually, they're going to mark it only as a one-yard loss. But what a play by Don Madigan. Comes inside out, Steve. Reads, the, reads his Josh Jennings and then just cleans up what he did. Slowed him down and he finished it off. How you doing, Aladdin? Good, oh, man. good to have you here. It's tough to get here tonight. Unbelievable huh? traffic trying to get in here. I parked. I think I, I could have walked to Yankee Stadium. That's how close I was. 52, Zach Ostrowski out. Again, had the extra point block. Let's see if they do a better job here. Cabrera will hold the ball. Ball snapped. Put down. And it's right through the uprights. Field goal was good. And just like that, Greenwich takes a 9-7 lead. And Aladdin, just to recap for you and for others, Justice Harrison came out early. New Britain seemed to have the advantage. However, Greenwich on their first drive all the way down the field, running the ball. Charlie Cobb, along with Stephen Longo, Brian McClellan. Then a turnover. Tough to tell. We believe it was on the snap. Greenwich comes back, gets a field goal, and that's where we are. 9 to 7, 324 remaining in the first quarter. Scott Gustafson, Aladdin Freeman now in the booth with us. And of course, Tony Zaleski on the field. What a night for football. So, Scott. Tony made a great point earlier. They say the confidence that they have inside the 35 yard line for the field goal kicker, Giles, that there was 29 yards, and that is going to be a big point is the special teams we were talking about earlier, Steve, and the ability that if they do get inside the 30 and they are stopped, that they can kick the three. 
Very important. And Aladdin, you talked about the importance of stopping this wing offense. We saw it on Tuesday night. Yeah, the wing T is predicated on reading the guards. The guards can take you wherever you want to go. If you're the inside linebackers, read the guards because they're going to, they'll lead you the whole time. They'll make you look like a star. Back to receive again. Harrison and Sound Foul Fainty. The ball hits at about the 20. Sound Foul Fainty will pick it up at the 15. He gets out to the 20. Breaks it, gets into a hole. 20, 30, 35. Out at about the 36 yard line. Sound Foul Fainty has been one of the early standouts for New Britain. Sound Foul Fainty gets out to about the 36 yard line. And that's where New Britain will start their next, next uh, set, of, next possession here. Oh, on the replay. All he's going to do is they set up a nice wedge. It's a short kick, but he's also the deep guy. They set up the wedge, and he doesn't even follow the wedge. He just hits it right up in there. See the crease right here? He explodes through it. He's always finished all his runs. Look how he runs over the linebacker. How was Picks up. First down. <laughs> and a big hit by the Cardinal. <laughs> what a play by number six, Matt Cristantiello. And Aladdin, you've seen it breaking up at all times. He just did that. Matt Cristantiello with a great play. He had, looked like he had Mike Davis open. Johnson rolled out to his right. Great play by Cristanti Yellow. 5'11", 175 pound senior to break that play up. It goes back to that confidence thing. That was a simple drag, drag route across the middle. And I don't know, just getting in here, how many short routes they've thrown to him. But Johnson was off early, last, earlier this week. So hopefully they get his confidence back. Something Scott made point of in the open. And looks like Johnson now gonna call a timeout. And Scott, you talked about the importance of Johnson coming out and really getting his game on and throwing the ball and having that confidence he did all year and during the season, as we stated before, threw for 2,334 yards, 34 touchdowns, only six interceptions. And how important is that for him to get that confidence going? It's very important. We talked about in the open, Steve, about eight for 13 for 133 yards in the last game. And then the second half, they kind of shied away from him after he won for his first four and strictly went to the run. Right there we saw earlier, uh, he went to his tight end. We went to John Plefka, a great pass down the sideline. It was about 42-yard gain, and that was only the second attempt of the uh, evening for Johnson. Big John Plefka, of course, who's played a big part in the game the other night. And real quick, while we have a moment here, we, again, like the, the telecast of this year's 2001 Class Double L State Championship football game was underwritten in part by the City of New Britain. Thank you, City of New Britain, for making this program possible. And yeah, definitely like to have them here as a sponsor and making it possible for us for tonight's state championship game. 3.05 remaining in the first quarter. A 9-7 lead for Greenwich. Sets up down, a second down and 10. Malone back in the backfield, has Garces out to his left. Garces in motion. I'm sorry, Davis in motion. The ball fake pitch, then handed underneath. Draw play to Harrison. He stumbles, fumbles the ball. Picked up by Keyless. And you see Harrison jumping up and down. I don't know if you could on the monitor there, but not happy with himself. Already committing one fumble, none all season. But Keyless was there to pick it up. Well, it's not going to matter because he was down. Plus, there was a play. Uh, there was a flag in the back. It's a simple counter play. Harrison hits right up the middle. He sees a seam. And I think he just gets tripped up by that field dwarf that we were talking about last week. But anyways, he's down on that. So the rest of the extracurricular activity. We're all bouncing up here, folks. It's, it's, it's chaos up here right now. I can't yeah, hear is. myself. It's fun, <laughs> it though. Is. It is, but we're having a good time with it. Scott, fumbles are turnovers a big part of the game. Harrison, you can see, was mad at himself for letting that ball get out of his hand. He was lucky, first of all, that not only was he down there, but uh, the flag in the backfield. But then they Harrison it twice. We're talking about no fumbles the whole season, and twice he's had he's had the jitters here. Uh, this is a big situation game. He's been here before, you know. They've been there before. They know what the big games mean. New Britain, a team that is full of seniors. Uh, they have a nice young nucleus as well. But uh, the flag is on New Britain. And that's going to bring it back down to the 20, which is about the 21 yard line. So a 15 yard loss there. It's going to set up a second down and 25. Jack Cocker not going to be happy with that. Penalties a problem with New Britain all season. We stated this this could hurt them down the road during the season. Penalty, penalties uh, totaled. Actually, I'm looking at my sheet here. Penalty 74 for 100, 571 yards during the regular season. Their opponents 39 for 313. So don't want that to happen here. Can hurt you, especially in a big game like this. Sets up now a second down and 25 at the 20 yard line. Man in motion again. Ball fake to Harrison in the backfield. Johnson rolls out to his right. Good pursuit by the Cardinals. They grab him, throws the throw the ball. It's out of bounds. That's number 83 on the play, David Ranta. The 5'10", 195 pound senior. Great closing speed by David Ranta all on that end. 
Take a look at Dave Aran at the top left of your screen. Johnson's rolling out to the right. He can't find anyone open because it's great coverage. You see Dave Aran to just shoot the gap, and that's great closing speed. He doesn't give Johnson a chance to make up his mind. He makes it up for him. Great job by Aranta. And Johnson, again, looking to gain his confidence. Cochran doing a little more passing early on, and I think that's definitely a point to try to get his confidence. But Scott, what do you have? I believe that what they were trying to say there, whether it was forward progress with his arm or not, or they're saying it was a fumble out of bounds. I'm trying to see if he did get the throw off in time. Referee Barry Fowler, again, you can tell there's a little more uh, commiserating and talking back and forth here. They want to make sure that you get everything right in the state championship game. They don't want any mistakes. Let's see what Barry Fowler has. We'll see if he's going to address the crowd here. We have Barry Fowler, and as we've had our referees mic'd all year. Let's see what Barry Fowler has to say. Tripping against the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Not something you want to do. Just as we said, Cochran's upset. Coach for uh, Greenwich. Albonzio. Albonzio. Coach Albonzio not going to be happy with that. A tripping play after a great play by Ranta. I don't know what happened because I couldn't hear anything. But I hope they didn't give up a first down on a second and 25. <laughs> I don't believe so. Ladin, let's let's tell people what's going on here. Ladin does not have a headset, so bear with us while we're trying to uh, get things worked out here. He's going to set up a second down and 20. It looks like a second down and 19 now is what they're calling it at the 26. 222 remaining in the first quarter. That's Pratt's in motion. A ball handed underneath to Harrison. Harrison, great tackle there. Only got about seven yards. Number 32, the offensive star, Brian McClellan, also working his, doing his job on defense, brings Harrison down. Going to set that set up a third and long. And any long yardage situation that New Britain's in, watch out for Harrison. You can see last week on Wednesday, on Tuesday, he hit a, a draw play for 75 yards. Right now, it'd be a great time to run a screen pass to slow down this Greenwich front line rush. And an injury on the play, as you see the Greenwich medical staff running out. Uh, we want to try to get a number for you. Here's a replay and see what happened here. It's a simple draw, and right now they're they're creating, they're beating the line of scrimmage. He just runs through some arm tackles, and it looks like somebody's knee might have just rolled up on each other. So, hopefully, the young man will be okay. That'll be a big loss for Greenwich if indeed David Ranta. No, David Ranta, as you see in your picture there, is running off and seems to be fine. Kind of got rolled over by McClellan on the back of his knee, but he's just got to come out for one play, and I'm sure he'll be right back in. 2.08 remaining here in the first quarter. Quarter's kind of been staggered and it's a slow quarter uh, because of the unfortunate medical emergency that took place. And then there's been a lot of stoppages throughout this first quarter of action. Nine to seven, Greenwich with the lead, a third and 11. Third and long. Lewis, Lewis Pratt runs back to the sidelines, in and out. Little confusion for New Britain. Clock running now, 154 remaining. Neil Johnson talks quick to Harrison, now conferring with him in the backfield. Man in motion again, ball handed off this time. That's number three, Julian Carey. Carey gets out, fumbles the ball out of bounds, but he was out anyway. They're going to mark it. Let's see, he might have a first down. It's going to be close. The flag on the play there, Steve. Look, look, look at some motion before. Flag either, on a, either that or Mike Davis with the holding. That's a, that's a good play to run, though. That's a little play you see Colorado, Nebraska, Oklahoma run. You send your, you send your back and get the motion yeah. going one way, send a speed guy the other way. They called it holding there, so that's going to be a uh, penalty. Take it. Let's see Barry Fowler has to say. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard foul. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. And that is a holding call, and that's going to set New Britain back. Penalties, not what you want in the state championship game, as we stated. Let's see where the hold occurred. It was number 19, Mike Davis. You could see right away from his reaction, he lets go. And anytime somebody does that, they're saying, I'm guilty. <laughs> yeah, kind of don't look at me, because I just did it <laughs> type of movement. And we'll see what happens with Neil Johnson and Harrison. Unlike him, has fumbled the ball out of his hand twice tonight. You got to look at the big number 88, John Plefka. Third and 21 at the 27 yard line. Man in motion, it's Pratt's again. Ball faked to J Harrison. Johnson looking deep. He's trying for Keelis. Ball thrown up, and there's a pass interference penalty. Number 17, Dan Taylor. The ball was thrown to Keelis. Taylor with a push. Pass interference. Taylor didn't play the ball that time. He played the man, and he got he mugged him. So you got to always learn when he told you last two on Tuesday, turn around if you're the D-back and play the ball, not the man. 
Scott, you saw that immediately. Johnson had all the time in the world, too. Nice, great pass over the middle. Defensive back knew and said, hey, I'm just going to dive on you and prevent you from going the distance. Actually, not a bad call, bad play from the standpoint for the defensive back there. Let's see what's going to happen here. Now it looks like they're bringing it back. Let's see what Barry Fowler has to say. It was a double infraction. Pass interference against the defense. Horseman from the previous spot, 15 yards, first down. Okay, they were just bringing that ball back to market correctly. So pass interference at time on Dan Taylor. Got to look at it here. Ball fake to Harrison. And he has all the time in the world, like Scott had said earlier. He steps up and throws it even in the pressure, and we'll probably miss the end of it. But see, number 17 is playing the ball, the man, not the ball. He's not, you got to turn around and play the, the man. That's a no-no. And after all this, Steve, we're back where we started. And the ball handed off, pitched out, let right to Harrison. Gets through the interior line, out to about the, looks like they're going to spot it at the, right at the 50-yard line. Maybe about the 49 and change. Going to set up a fourth down. Interesting call here early on in the game for Jack Cochran. Second down, Steve. It's a toss sweep. Great vision by their running back. He follows the great kickout block by his guard. And if he keeps his feet, he might still be running. And it's a great job all around on that play. Good call. That was my mistake there. One, oh, one minute remaining, 9-7. to seven. New Britain with the lead. Again, the state championship from Kent Strong Stadium. A second down and the board's all over the place. It'll be second down and three here at the 49. Again, Davis in motion. The ball handed, draw play. Harrison, not much there this time. They sniff that one out immediately. Looks like number 78, John Sullivan, in on the tackle. And it's going to set up now a really no gain on the play. Third down and third down and two. Maybe they're going to give him a yard. And what this is, is this is Greenwich controlling the line of scrimmage. You can see there's not much push. And in fact, there's push going the opposite way. And if you do that, you're going to take away any good running back. Sets up a third and short. 17 seconds, clock running here in the first quarter. Man in motion, again it's Davis. Ball pitched out left to Harrison. Harrison tries to get to the outside. Great stiff arm, then lowers his shoulder, gets the first down. Brought down by Tim Smallwood. Stiff arm, great job on Brian McClellan. Also another great block there by number 51, that's Jordan Reno. Great job on the left side, he comes outside, he followed. You guys know what I'm gonna say, the best thing that Harrison does is put this ball in the outside hand, allowing him to use that stiff arm. And, uh, that stiff arm gets him five yards from where the initial contact was made. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. So an exciting but slow moving first quarter. However, a nine to seven lead for the Greenwich Cardinals. Join us for the second quarter, right after this, more excitement coming up. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Sally's having some behavioral problems. I guess that reward system isn't working. Well, the timeouts weren't either. You know, parents do find that timeouts aren't... See? Well, you're just too lenient. Well, you're too strict. No, you are. No, you are. No, you are. No, you are. When adults don't have the answers, they can feel as frustrated as kids. Connectforkids.org has thousands of resources for helping kids in your community. Connectforkids.org. Guidance for grown-ups. Hello. And welcome back here to New Britain... Welcome back here to Kent Strong Stadium. That's the second time I've done that. One of these times, Steve, you will get it correct. Yes, I will. And they caught me a little bit there. Well, what are you going to do? You can't, can't get them right every time, right? As New Britain's showing there with all the penalties so far tonight. That's right. I'm going to have to be yelled out by one of the coaches here. Some of the sights and sound here at Kent Strong Stadium. New Britain has shown they've been able to move this ball, which is very key for confidence on their offense. Again, a man in motion, ball handed, draw play. Harrison gets through the initial line out to the 30, 20, 15, 10. Get inside and cut again, put it on the board. New Britain with the score. It's now going to be a, a 13 to 9 lead. And look at this, Harrison, you can see how professional they are, but what a great run by Justice Harrison. Excellent call, play call. All this is is going to be a simple draw play. You're going to drop back. These linebackers aren't respecting Harrison. See how they back off? Their, their first step is back. Harrison hits up in there, gets a great block from number 55 and number 9, Keonis, who both two pancakes. The rest is just a great back, making great plays. Look at this cutback here. Back to live action here. Point after attempt is right through the uprights for Davis. That's good. And of course, 55, you're talking about Kyle Coomer. The last last line of defense there, Matt Cristantiello, 
almost as hard as Sumpa Fendi. Uh, Chris Dantiello was the last on a defense, and what a great cutback by Harrison. A great job also. We talked about, Aladdin talked earlier about Elfrin Keyless with a great block. It was, he first of all pancaked his first guy, but then he stepped with it and said, hey, I know there's still guys further downfield, kept with it, but Harrison made that last move inside, which enabled him to get in the end zone. There is no substitute for a great back in December. When it's cold, even though it's about 85 degrees today, maybe 100 up here, there's no substitute for a great dynamite back like Harrison. Absolutely, you said the other day, big backs make big plays in big games, and he just did that. That's his second touchdown of the night, by the way. First one was a 24-yard run, and that one, uh, we're going to get yardage on that, I believe. We're going to have to check 15, out with that. 55. It's called about a 50, 55-yard run somewhere between. We'll get the exact yardage, but now, at this point, has to have gained over 320 yards in two, two state playoff games, won a playoff point championship. And you got the yardage on it, Scotty. 44-yard run for Harrison in that last one. 44 yards for Harrison. The first one, a 24-yarder. And this this kid, he's going to have his pick of schools if he keeps doing the things he's done, as he's done his whole high school career. Especially and when that, he gets there and he runs track. He, he, when this guy starts running track, forget about it. You see the good foot there by Davis. It's going to go in the end zone. It'll be a touchback at the 20-yard line. That was number 32, Brian McClellan, deep back. He let the ball land in the end zone. I was hoping it was going to go out of bounds. Go pick it up at the 20. He's flirting with disaster, though, because if he kicks that ball out of bounds, they get it already back to 35. And that's not, especially with this Greenwich offense, that's very methodical. You don't want to give him any yards that they already can manufacture. Good word. Methodical. I like that out of you, lad. Trying. I wish I could hear myself saying it, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 14 to 9 here. Sec early second quarter, 11.51 remaining in the second quarter. A lot of action so far. We expect a lot more. It'll be first down and 20 for the Cardinals. First down and 10, I'm sorry, at their own 20. And Cabrera calling out singles. Hands the ball, simple draw play to McClellan. I'm sorry, that's Longo on the carry. Longo's gonna get four yards on the game. Set up a second and six. Talking about some of the uh, sights and scenes here. We've, I had to park about three blocks away. I know, Aladdin, you had trouble the same way, but there's a lot of people here tonight. We're going to get an official attendance, too. This, again, is a power play. It's a good block by the, the um, guard, and he just follows right behind him, keeps his feet moving, picks up four yards. And that's important for Greenwich because if they can keep, keep the New Britain offense off the field, they're going to chew up some clock and get them out of the rhythm. And that was Ola Bessie in on the stop. Ola Bessie's been in a lot so far for the defense of the Golden Hurricanes. Ball run this time. And again, it's McClellan. McClellan really getting, carrying the bulk of the uh, load tonight, along with Longo. It's going to set up a third. Looks like a third and four. Again, two yards on the play. Greenwich coming into this game being known as a ball control team. They're a team that likes to run, likes to pound it. But coming into Coach Albanzio says, hey, I know that some of these things about the New Britain defense, I know that they're good against the run. I know they give up only under two yards a game, a, a carry for each, each run. When they said they were going to start to maybe throw across the field, you kind of wonder if maybe now's the time without any success in the last uh, 10, 12 plays running the ball if you won't see Cabrera start to air it out some. Good point. We'll see if Coach Albanzio will let them open it up. They do have one receiver outside to the left. McClellan goes out left. No, the ball's going to be handed off. I'm sorry, it's McClellan that gets the ball on the sweep. Looks like he has enough for the first down. So they did put a guy outside to the left, and that was number 12, Nick Bastis. But uh, eventually uh, he was brought down. It was a, a simple play, handoff around the uh, end, and he got a first down. There's a little shake and bake mixed direction, and there's again reading the guards, number 60. He's telling you where this play's going. But having watched West Haven run up and down the field with these misdirections on New Britain, you bet your bottom dollar you're going to see it a bunch of times. And who was that on the tackle again? But Marco Gordon, number 62 this time. Yep. Gordon that time, and uh, Andrew Madigan, who's been around the ball a lot tonight, made the initial contact, but Gordon on the, on the eventual tackle. Sets up a first down and 10 at the 29-yard line. Call grabs the ball at about the 29, gets about five yards on the game. Josh Jennings not happy with himself as he slipped through that tackle. Brought down, again, Olabesi there, along with number 68, trying, which is Mark Marotti. I'm sorry, sorry jumping in on you guys. They're trying to reinforce uh, Jennings and Madigan to get upfield and create pressure. He comes upfield a little bit too much. As you can see, he creates a lane, and he gets a nice kickout block by number 51. Robert Nettel, and then the running back just hits up inside behind it. Great vision and good reads by these backs. It's very important when you run a wing tee to read the blocks. 9-17 remaining here in the second quarter. Ball handed underneath. 
Better job by the Golden Hurricanes this time. Not much of a game. Going to set up a third down at about four. And the interior line of the defense along with the linebackers, Dan Perez in on the tackle there. Get a look here at the replay, just a simple draw play. Andrew Madigan helping to push back. And look at that line of scrimmage, it doesn't go anywhere. Maybe a yard, maybe. That's most important for these defensive lines. A lot of white and gold in there. Sets up now a third down and two at the, their own 39 for the Cardinals. 8.41 remaining here now. The clock running 14 to 9. Ball handed. This time it's Longo. And the Longo breaks through the initial contact. Gets enough for the first down. They're going to move the change again for the Cardinals. And this offense, the way they're running this offense right now, it's predicated on the center and the two guards because they're just running a smash mouth offense right at New Britain saying we're stronger than you. Look at the center and the two guards. Again, pulling the guards are. The, the running back number 32 hits up right behind it and it always is going to create a lane every time. And Dan Perez on the tackle. At the 40, their own 45, a first down and 10. Second first down of the drive. This time the ball handed to the first back, Steve Longo, we believe. Uh, we're going to check on that. I believe it was Longo. Only a couple yards in any event. Going to set up a second down and long. New Britain doing a good job there. They had a, they had seven guys in the box right there. They see the run coming up the middle every time. They get the seven guys right in there. I mean, these linebackers are absolutely the anchor, the backbone of this here defense. And New Britain now looking to make a big stop here. Don't want them to keep moving these chains and a running clock in the meantime. Jim Cabrera talking to some of his backs here. Ball handed off to Cobb around right. Gets to the outside. Gets by Sound Falfenke. And then got to the outside with Saki. Eventually made the tackle. Knocking out of bounds. Let's see where they're going to mark it. They're going to be close to another first down. As these ends get older, they're going to learn to take on plays with their arms instead of their shoulders. And that's what happened right there. Jenkins took the play on with his shoulders and was able to get the, around him. As soon as he gets older, he's going to take it on with his hands, see what's going on, and be able to sh shed the blocks. But right now, New Britain's having trouble shedding the blocks of Greenwich. Another first down for the Cardinals. The third one on this drive, and they are not only chewing up a lot of yardage, they're chewing up a lot of clock as well. 7.20 remaining and keeping that high-powered New Britain offense off the field. And that's where they want them. The New Britain jumps and it did come over the line, so that's going to be a penalty. Push it up even more now for the Cardinals. A couple players jumped there. Josh Jennings, looks like Andrew Madigan, also jumped. And Cabrera looking over to his coach. If I'm New Britain, pushes the ball five yards. Yeah, if I'm New Britain, uh, I've seen him on the coach. And five yard penalty. Pushing Still first down. Wind it. Start running stunts, maybe some slants and twists, especially inside, taking away the dives up the middle. Barry Fowler's not going to like the fact that you spoke over his call there. <laughs> Again, folks, I can't hear anything. <laughs> that's all right, because that's, right, that's going to set up a first down and five at the 40-yard line of the Golden Hurricanes. 6.50 now remaining in the second quarter. Cabrera drops back, looks out to his left. Ball overthrown, intended for Smallwood. Sound foul, thank you, with good coverage. It looked like it might have been tipped there at the line of scrimmage. Number 62 for New Britain. That's uh, Marco Gordon, one of the anchors of the defensive line. Looks like he might have gotten a piece of the ball there. Looking at this replay, Andrew Jackson's going to wish he wasn't such a nice guy. You get a chance to take a guy out and pop him, especially in a state title game, you do it. He'll learn that when coming back next year, next two years, he'll learn that. And the first attempt on the entire, on the entire night so far for the Cardinals sets up a second and five. As we stated before, not really a passing offense at all here for the, for the uh, Cardinals. The ball pitched back to Cobb. Cobb tries to run up the middle, and he's stuffed immediately. A couple of tacklers. Looks like, again, Ola Bessie in there. Josh Jennings I saw running across. We'll get a replay here and see what who helped out. But the Golden Hurricanes gang tackling. You, you talked about Cabrera, first of all. First year starter this year, however, he is a junior, but he is able to throw. We know last game he did have three touchdown passes, so they're not going to be afraid to go to him, as we said earlier. Ola Bessie holding his ground and destroying that whole play, and your guy, number two, Soundfall Thankty, cleaning up. Aladdin, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> that name had rolled off the tongue. <laughs> You're right about Cabrera. He did throw three touchdown passes last game. It looks like they really want to eat this clock up, though, and not let them Golden Hurricanes offense and Justice Harrison out on the field. The ball's going to be faked this time, and now he's looking that way, but no, he's not. South Valfanti, the ball's fumbled. We'll see if New Britain recovered. 
waiting for the referee. Barry Fowler said, no, it's down. It's going to be the Cardinals' ball. And a very good job there by the entire defense of the Golden Bears. And if I'm Wes Haven, or sorry, Greenwich's head coach, I come back to that play because Brian McClellan was wide open. There was no one within 15 yards of him. He was picking up momentum. And that's the play they were trying to set up. Coach Albanzio, I'm sure we'll talk to him about that. Not much time there, though. Great pursuit by the Hurricane defense. It'll be back to kick. Back to receive is Harrison, the home player back there at the 20-yard line. The snap is perfect. Ball kicked out to about the 16. That's where to go out of bounds. I'm sorry, that was Andrew Jackson back there. I'm sorry, not Harrison. So they get the ball now at the 16-yard line. And what do we expect now to New Britain? Do you go to Harrison or do you, Scott? Well, Harrison has been the main, the main offensive threat right now. I mean, Johnson really, he's thrown the ball twice tonight. He had the one thing, he had the nice pass to Klefka, who went down the sideline, we said earlier, about a 40-yard gain. The other ball was uh, the pass interference calls. I mean, they've had some success with it. You can. I mean, they just ate up almost six minutes, six and a half minutes of clock right there. There's 5.15 to go here in the second quarter. They've got about uh, 85 yards to go right now. I mean, Harrison, I mean, he's your go-to guy. But, I mean, you know the pass is there. Yeah, and Johnson throughout the year has been successful, although his confidence, as we stated the other night and Tuesday, is a little shot. Let's see what happens here. Harrison in the lone back again. Ball hit, pitched real quick to Pratt. Pratt gets it out. I'm sorry, not Pratt. That's number three, Julian Car Cardi. Cardi not used much, not really used at all in the two games we did this year. And Cardi twice already has been used by Coach Carr. I like the call, though. You're getting a, like I always say, you're getting a good player in space, one-on-one -on -one with the guy. Now, he may get tackled here, but he still picks up four yards. This is just as good as a run play. Sorry, two yards. Still good as a run play. I'm starting to wonder about the health of Lewis Pratt because Lewis Pratt is normally the player we'll see as his third option. But now, actually, Pratt is in the game, so he must not be injured. So they're just getting Cardi some playing time here in the state final. Sets up a second down at eight at their own 19 for the Golden Hurricanes. Ball pitch to Harrison out left. Harrison tries to break through the hole. Gets up to about the 23. They'll set up a third down and three. I like the call, Steve. Again, I, I like the call. The only time I'd like to see Don Madigan in there rather than Mike Davis because he brings a little bit more thunder. Here's Davis at the, at the top of your left screen. He, he gets kind of stood up right there. Not as a running back, you don't want to see that. You want to see some drive going forward. And again, if that's Madigan, Harrison, Harrison probably picks up the first down. But they did tell us they never run the same offense for two games in a row. So that's right. It's been told to us a couple of times. I'd be. I'd watch out right here for Elfred Keelis has not been, uh, we have not called his name much tonight. He's now flanked out to the left. Keelis out left, Pratt's out to the right, and Harrison in the backfield. Jumping in, they're playing kind of deep off the wide receivers right now. Ball handed underneath though, the star back, Harrison will have enough for the first down. Gets just enough, and that's gonna be a first down for the Golden Hurricanes. Be able to start, let's see where they're gonna mark it. Yes, it is a first down. 3.49 remaining. John Fuscaldo on the tackle. Fuscaldo holds on. If he doesn't hold on, there's an even bigger gain again. Greenwich's linebackers, especially number 55, 52, is cheating a little bit, meaning he's not taking his appropriate reads, and he's asking to be hit with a draw play. I'm sure that's a correction they're going to make in the second half. And that is a Strowski and Zach Zeon, number 55. Strowski, of course, number Sorry, 50. 56, Steve. Is the oh, guy. 56, Peter Salvatore. <coughs> Sets up now a first and 10 for the Golden Hurricanes at their own 28. 320 remaining here in the second quarter. Ball handed to Harrison, draw play. Yeah, he did, he ran right into the line there and ran into one of his own players. Stopped him, good tackle there, and that's Harrison bouncing around. He's fired up and so are this defensive line for Greenwich. Coach Cochran probably going to have to go to the pass here. That's been two and a half minutes. They've only gained about 12 yards in this drive. We talked about time being a factor in this drive. They had five and a half minutes on the clock to go. Coming into this with 85 yards to go. Hey, only getting 12 yards in two minutes is it's not going to cut it. And Neil Johnson now takes a walk over to Jack Cochran and talk to him before this next play. 2.46 remaining here in the first half. 14 to 9, an exciting game so far. And we expect more. New Britain with the lead. Uh, I want to know which one of us is supposed to be Dennis Miller, since there's three of us up here. <laughs> well, you're usually telling the jokes a lot, so that should be you. <laughs> Pratt's in motion. Johnson back to pass. Looking deep. Overthrows Keelis. Also, Davis was downfield. Very good coverage there. Number 17, that's Dan Taylor. Back there along with, looks like number 11, Tim Smallwood. 
both back deep and not much area to throw. Johnson with all the time in the world and he picks to go double team. He goes into double coverage right there. Uh, number 19, Mike Davis, was coming kind of in, and uh, he just threw basically right into two receivers. He just overthrew him, which was actually the smarter move because there was no way he was going to force that ball in there. I do like the call, though, because it's going to back Greenwich up a little bit, knowing that this guy has a cannon. I didn't know he could throw 55 yards, not even putting all his might into it. Well, that's, a, that's a good point. You open the game up for Harrison. We'll see what happens here. Keelis, the lone receiver, out to his right. And actually, that's Pratt, who's also in motion. Davis out to the right. Johnson drops back, looks for Keelis. He forces that one. Keelis with the great catch. Leaps up, makes the catch at the 48. He gets up and, and points that way, saying, yeah, I can do that. When you catch 55 balls, you got to catch the bad ones and the good ones. So, and that's what he did there. This is a simple, again, an in route. It's about a 15-yard in. Watch Keelis. He's at the lower part of your screen. You don't see him right now, but watch this vertical. He shows up. Great grab, but he doesn't do it to INT. Keelis was able to get open there, Steve, with uh, the pump fake there by Johnson. He had plenty of time, had a good pump fake, and Keelis went up and grabbed it. This time underneath the Harrison, met immediately there by 78, John Sullivan. Helped out by number 61, Dean Caprell Jr. I'm a junior lad. I know you have, I know New Britain knows they have a great back, but you got to stay on the blocks a little bit longer than that. Talk about Alfred Keelis a little bit. How quickly he got up. He's 6'1", 195. You see him, I know he's been recruited a lot as well. You see him being a good back down the road. I mean, a good receiver, I'm sorry, in college. Yeah, he puts on a little size. I don't know how tough he is because we haven't really seen him go over the middle too much. He just showed us right there that he can, though, and he's willing to extend himself, which is very key. But he's only a junior. He's going to be back. Pratt's again in motion. 118 remaining here in the first half. Ball handed off. Draw play again to Harrison. Much better job this time. Back-to-back -back consecutive plays. Again, that's... Capa Caparelli Jr., Dean Caparelli Jr., the 5'9", 175-pound senior who brought down Harrison. Looked like someone didn't finish their block over there, and Caparelli Jr., just sitting down on the ground, just kind of, here's kind of tripped right over him. Sometimes it's better to be in the right spot at the right time. <laughs> better to be lucky than be right. That's I'd be right. lucky than go. 46 seconds on the clock running. I'm surprised, surprised Jack Cochran not using any of these timeouts. You might just want to let the clock run down with this offense. I'm kind of surprised by that. But let's see. Third down and long. Pratt's in motion. Ball fake to Harrison. Looks out to his left. Has Plefka. Plefka catches at the 48. Runs up to the 45. And we'll see now if Greenwich will call a timeout. 23 seconds on the clock. John Sullivan on the tackle. Good read by John Sullivan. They had that screen set up nice. I don't know if he'd have got the first down as there was another defender over there, but a good read by the big man. Watch 78. He's going to be in the middle of the screen. Now he's peeling off. He already reads screen right now. Look at this hustle out of a guy that's 270 pounds. Look at this. Boom. Brings his hips with him. Finishes the play. Wow, and New Britain calls the timeout with six seconds on the clock. I'm a little curious about that. I thought they would just run the clock out. Uh, but they decided to call a timeout. What you want to do, if they're going to punt or whatever they do right now, they want to make sure they, they're all on the same page, no mistakes. You don't want to give up a big mistake going to halftime down rather than up. Here's my question, though. Why call a timeout with six seconds on the clock? Well, as Ladin said earlier, you didn't know that Johnson had that arm. It is only 45 yards here. I mean, one play takes six seconds. Do you give you one ch chance right there in the end zone with a guy like Keyless in the receiving end? Let's see. Let's see what they're going to I don't think they would call a huddle here with uh, Jack Cochran just to kneel on it. So they're obviously going to go and take a deeper out, maybe throwing what we call the Hail Mary. What we could see, though, remember Tuesday was a jump route to John Plefka. You get him in the end zone, just jump up, use your 6'8". Get it up there, and hopefully he can get it. And he's Virginia, got the speed to get down there as well for a big guy. You you, you, I know you both know the gurus that you are. Virginia used to do it all the time with uh, Sean Moore, Sean Moore, Herman Moore. I was just about to say that. You took the words out of my mouth. Uh, Keelis out to the left, Davis out to the right. So it looks uh, surprised they're not stacking all the receivers on one side of the field, but maybe they're trying to fear, free, free, easy for me to say, Keelis up on the left. Trying to get one-on-one -on -one coverage down here on the right side. That's exactly what they got right now. Good call. They have Davis out here to the right. Let's see if Johnson goes to him. Fakes to Harrison. Looking down for Keelis. Looking that way the whole way. Throws the ball up to Keelis. Keelis looked like he was held. No flag on a play. That's going to be the last play in the half. Keelis broke his route, too. He had a chance at that ball if he's a little bit deeper. He got he stutter stepped a little bit, turned around, got caught, lost a step or two, and unfortunately wasn't getting to where the ball was supposed to be, and it was there. And Co Co Coach Cochran's giving it to him, saying that ball was there. Why would you break that route? 
Can't break that route. Look at the replay. <clears throat> Keyless is running a, a post route. He's going to a post corner. Sorry. He fakes the post, and then he goes to the corner. And it, at the end of this, you see him. He breaks his route. Rather than keep running, he had it. Great Two ball. steps that he lost is exactly where the ball ended up. And I don't know. You weren't here Tuesday, but we've seen that now twice going into the half before. Uh, the big tight ends ended up Love on the it. five instead of getting in the end zone. That's right. So, Steve Margiata, Scott Gumson, and Landon Freeman will be back here for the second half of action. The score after one half, New Britain 14 and Greenwich 19. Be back for more great action after this. This program is underwritten in part by the Guidus Milk and Ice Cream Company based in New Britain, Connecticut. Thank you, Guidus, for making this telecast possible. This program is underwritten in part by a grant from the City of New Britain. Thank you, New Britain, for helping make this telecast possible. And welcome back to Kent Strong Stadium as we await the opening kickoff here in the second half of a 14-9 contest between the New Britain Golden Hurricanes and the Greenwich Cardinals. And Scott and Aladdin, some first half stats. Justice Harrison, 13 carries for 113 yards. And of course, the two touchdowns, one of 24 yards, the other of 44. For the Greenwich Cardinals, Longo, 9 carries, 66 yards. McClellan, 5 carries, 27 yards. And Cobb, 7 carries for 43 yards. We talked about Justice Harrison. I know a lot of people have talked in the state that Tim Washington, of course, is the one who gets all the press. Some feel that maybe Justice Harrison may be the best all-around back in the state. You, You're said it. you said it. He's the best back I've seen play in the last two years. Now, I haven't seen Tim Washington live. But he's probably the best back that I've seen play because he can cut, he has a breakaway speed, he uses his stiff arms, and he keeps his legs moving the whole time. Plus, he can add shake and bake. He may be the best back New Britain's ever had, too. Whoa, 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 Aladdin, you got to stop right there. Do the man some justice, I know, okay? But don't give him all the credit in the world. There is a man, by the way, by the name of Tabucky Jones that played here in New Britain that actually took that team to the 1992 state finals over a certain Greenwich team right here. So you got to talk about Tabucky, who later went on to Syracuse as you know and turned into a D-back now with the New England Patriots so give the man some justice but don't give him all the credit. Now the only thing I have to say to that is <laughs> Tabucky Jones got recruited to play D-back. Justice Harrison's getting recruited to play running back by everybody not just by Syracuse. Hey it's by Aladdin Freeman so that's a lot in my book. <laughs> all right guys enough I'm gonna have to get Don Zarrell to break you guys up here because I'm gonna continue to broadcast this game because I can't wait for this second half as both teams break apart they come out on the field and very sportsmanlike Barry Fowler brings both teams together and they shake hands, the captains again this telecast of the year 2000 <laughs> class double L state championship football game is underwritten in part by the city of New Britain thank you city of New Britain for making this program possible and again the captains out there and let's go now to Tony Zaleski Tony what do you have for us thanks guys I feedback from the sidelines. I don't expect Greenwich to do much uh, much anything different on offense. Uh, New Britain is daring them to run the ball, or to throw the ball rather, with 10 men in the box. I think Greenwich is committed to keeping up the trickery with the wing T offense. Uh, as for New Britain, I would certainly expect a gadget play from Coach Cochran somewhere along the way. Halfback option, flanker option, reverse. Uh, it's been their calling card all season to pull one at some point during the game, and that just hasn't happened. Uh, quite frankly, it's been one heck of a first half. 14-9 to nine is about what we expected. And as we kick off here, I know for a fact that Aladdin is just dying to be on the field. Back to you. Yeah. Maybe your furry friend is waiting for Aladdin down there. 
Uh, ball kicked into the end zone. You saw the Greenwich Cardinal next to Tony trying to get in the shot. Ball will be placed at the 20. That's where Greenwich will take over. Just to brush on the fact that Tony was talking about the Greenwich offense running the ball. They ran for about 155 yards in the first half. Now, go back to think about New Britain defense. All season long, they'd only given up 466 yards combined on the ground. Last, last game, of course, they gave up about 224 to West Haven. So we're seeing two different teams here the last two weeks as opposed to what they saw in the regular season. You're also seeing much better offenses rather than what they've been playing, like the Bristol Easterns that we saw and St. Paul, E.C. Goodwin Tech. As you talked about, they were just better. I'm sorry, they also did, did see Bristol Central, which did have Tim Washington on that team, Aladdin. Good point, Scott. First down to 10 at their own 20. The ball handed off. It's McClellan. McClellan gets, looks like, maybe five yards. Better game than that. They're going to mark it all the way to the 20. Oh, they're gonna, now they're marking it back. No, 20, they're going to mark it at the 25-yard line. Set up a second down, a little over five yards. Again, watch the guards and the tackles. All they're doing, if you're the linebacker, follow them, and you can be a star. You probably have 25, 30 tackles out there. That's what these coaches should teach these middle linebackers to do. They're taking you wherever the play is. And we'll see if they did, if they change their offense up at all with Greenwich. One receiver out to the right, three in the backfield. Ball handed to Cobb. Cobb out to the right side. Good pursuit. Dan Perez with the tackle. Looks like he might have lost a yard on the play. Robert Natal. Let's get, we, talk, Scott. we talked about the speed and size of that defense right there. Right there, they showed the speed, able to get to the outside, track down Cobb. The other thing was that watching, what, look at number 51 for Greenwich. Look at him lead. All the linebacker does, and that's also number two, takes on the block. You follow him, and that's where the running back is, soon to follow. Great play, and I got to give Sound Foul Fank the credit on that. Dan Perez picked up afterwards. I Perez. think you just like to say that last name, Steve, first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, after I learned it, I just I, I can't stop saying it now. We used to just call him by his first name, Kamala, but we've since, since learned the correct pronunciation of the last name. Ball pitch this time. McClellan out to the left. Much better job in this first drive here by the Golden Hurricane defense. Wow, and a pylon late. They're lucky that Olabashi was not called for a penalty there, but he's not, and it's going to be fourth down. Good job by Madigan there, the open field. Open field tackles are so, so important. He doesn't be able to get him down by himself, but he does hold him up there. As you see, Madigan come, you see him coming across the left side. Number four, that's Andrew Madigan who's going to get him. He's going to wrap him up, and he's going to hold on and wait for his other defenders to help him out and get to the tackle. And shook the block by Carl. And again, Kamfas thanked He's doing a good job of taking on the guard, again, who's always going to be pulling. And now back to punt. Good pursuit. That small with a bad kick. And Keelis is going to pick it up. Interesting decision. Runs it a couple yards, gets up to the 43. Didn't let it go out of bounds. Small with not a very good kick. A poor kick. Gets out, and then New Britain's going to start with great field position at the their own, I'm sorry, at the Greenwich. 43-yard line. He was lucky just to get that ball off. It was a tremendous pressure, and it does take a Greenwich bounce. And the reason why he picked it up was Quinones realizes he's taking a big bounce. He's right there to grab it. He saves his team probably about 10, 15 yards. That's where we'll start at the 43-yard line. Johnson trips over his own player and falls down on for a misfortune there. Ball will be placed at the 40. Nine yard line, and that was number 51 that he tripped over. That's Jordan Raynall. Raynall went backwards, and unfortunately for them, Johnson tripped over. I don't know what they had set up, but number 88 was wide open. There's nobody within 15 yards of him. Maybe a tight end screen out there. It looks like it actually may have been somebody else on the interior line that he tripped over. Number 53, actually number 63, Nan Cass, the center. Quick pitch here to Pratt's. Pratt's out to the left. Brought down at the 44-yard line. That's number 14, Pat Wilson on the tackle. The 6'4", 185-pound sophomore. Having the way, seeing the way that uh, Harrison's running the ball in the first half, the linebackers are still not showing any respect. They're dropping off deep, and Cochran's going to take advantage of this this half, as you can see, coming out aggressively calling two pass plays. And that was Lewis Pratt. We saw him uh, throughout the season. We saw him on Tuesday, his first catch of the day. Pratt's out right, Keelis out to the left. Ball fake to Harrison in the backfield. Johnson's going to run with it this time. Looked like he had a hole, then just a swarm of red jerseys closed that hole down. And that was a tackle by David Ranta, but good pursuit by the entire defense. Ranta able to actually set up Johnson right there and actually nail him to the ground. 
because once Johnson goes around, he comes through, nice play action fake there, and he's going to keep it himself. And as he comes out, he gets spun around a little, you know, slows down his progress. Otherwise, he did have a gap there, but Ranta able to just come on as soon as his momentum is slowed. And we'll give McClellan credit on the initial grip. Even though the quarterback took a big pop, I do like the decision. Last, last time we saw Johnson, he was very indecisive on whether he was going to run or pass. This time, he made up his mind right away. See if he wasn't open, I'm going to run it. Jack Cochran deciding to go for it here. 7.59 remaining in the third quarter. Harrison gets the pitch out left, has a hole, gets the first down, and a two yards more. Definitely going to get the first down on that play. Harrison, good enough for the, for the first down, and continue the drive here for the Golden Hurricane. It's not fair when you run a running back like Harrison to the short side of the field. You have two defenders to stop him, and they can do this all night. You also talk about the great blocking. We talked about the receivers. That is so important. If you get a wide receiver out there blocking, you know your team is doing well right there. Lewis Pratt's number one on the left side. Absolutely just throwing the defender out to the outside, letting Harrison go interior. Good read by Harrison. Pratt's not the biggest. 5'10", 170. Let's see what happens here. First and 10 at the Greenwich 32. Johnson rolls out to his right after the fake handoff. Looking deep. Has Pratt's. And the ball knocked down. Yes, it was knocked down. I paused for a moment. Couldn't see if Wilson did hit it. Wilson hit it with his right hand. Pratt's not able to grab it after that. Johnson flushing to the outside. He's getting the pressure to, coming towards the sideline. He throws the ball up maybe a little too late. He did have Pratt's open momentarily, but then the two defenders did close in, and he was actually throwing into double coverage down there in the end zone. So you see Johnson rolling out, being pursued by number 56, that Peter Salvatore and absolutely just waits to the last second, just kind of, hey, let me just try to see what I got down there. And he absolutely throws right there. Good coverage. Still good play by Wilson, but you talk about Harrison being a decoy, he was there again. I don't like the I don't like the decision by him, right? Just pat him on the head, now I want to smack him upside it because he could have ran the ball. A big gain there if he wanted to. This time, Johnson trying to get to the outside, down to the 23 and the 20. Looks like he might have stepped up. Yeah, oh wow, he didn't. They're going to mark it at the 15. I thought he might have stepped out at about the 20. But they're going to mark it all the way down to the 15-yard line. That's enough for a first down. When in doubt, go to Justice. Who's the best running back in Connecticut playing right now? Huh? I don't know. Let's see. Anyways, great vision. All he's going to do is outrun the defenders. He got a back like that. What he's doing, again, great block. Almost a holding by Pratt. And he has the ball. Harrison in the right hand. Able to use his stiff arm to the left. David Ranson, number 83 there, just kind of let him go by, lets him go by. He thinks that he's already stepped out of bounds. you got to finish your tackles, guys. Good point. It sets up a first and 10 at the 16 of the Cardinals. Pitch this time out to the left of Harrison. Follow his blockers. But the Cardinals were able to bring him down. Number 61 on, in on the play. That's Dean Cap Caparelli, Jr. And also some other uh, of the Cardinals in there to help out on the tackle. You, you said it, though, following his blockers. Harrison patiently waits. He puts his hand on his uh, lead blocker's hip. And there's nothing there, but still, that's a good good run by him. Jordan Reynaud, his big lineman that was trying to lead him downfield into the end zone for me, possibly his third touchdown of the day. But Johnson drops back a quick throw here, and Pratt's lets it go. I'm sorry, that's Keyless. No, I'm sorry again. My eyes are failing me. That's Garces Davis who dropped the ball, and it's going to be a third down. You, if you're New Britain, you want to make sure you come away with something here. I wouldn't be surprised to see them run a run play to set it up right in the middle of the field to get your kicker a better opportunity to kick a field goal. And like you said, this is just a simple drop. Scott, you go ahead and take it. <laughs> Thank you. And Coach Cochran actually using all, I was just going to say, oh, Coach Cochran's using all sides of the fields right here. He's running left, he's running right, and he's passing more. Johnson only had four pass attempts in the first half and already four right there, number five, as it passes down to uh, Lewis Pratt. Pratt's along the left side. And Pratt's could catch the ball, but then it was fumbled. A quick pitch out to the left. Pratt's had the ball, tried to make a little extra, and Smallwood recovered the fumble. Good job by the Carl defense and a turnover going the other way. Two things Pratt's did wrong. He tried too much shake and bake, had the ball inside of him, and instead of just getting down, having picked up the first down, he's trying, watch, it's a simple throw. He puts the ball on the inside. I always tell you guys, keep the ball on the outside, away from the defenders, and this is why he fumbles. Instead of just getting down, a shake and bake ends up turning the ball over. You don't fault the man too much for doing that because he's trying, but it's not a smart play by the senior. Mike Pitassi with a hit that caused the fumble. Smallwood recovers, and a turnover. 
Going the other way now for the Cardinals. We saw a turnover earlier for New Britain. Let's see if this changes momentum again. Cobb out to the right, finds a hole, then falls over. Nobody brought him down. Just fell on the turf, gets up to about the 15-yard line. It's like a wet rug out there, Steve. As soon as this time of night, the dew starts to settle. They get that little moisture on the top layer of this artificial turf. Some teams aren't used to playing on this kind of a surface. This time of night, things like that can happen. And New Britain's lucky he fell because they had this set up beautifully. There's, he has a lot of space out front. Both blocks are made. And luckily he trips up. Otherwise, he still could be running probably 15, 20 yards downfield. Yeah, the only two players back there were Wasaki and Sam Falfanke, and there was three or four red jerseys out there. Try and say those two names together five or six times. 5.51 remaining in the third quarter. 14 to nine, New Britain with the lead. The second down and nine at their own 14. McClellan comes in motion. Ball thrown out to the right. Led too far for Smallwood. They're gonna call interference on Andrew Jackson. I don't like that call. Horrible, horrible call. Andrew Jackson did nothing wrong. I'm sorry. I hate to jump on the rest, but that's a bad call. Yes, they do a good job. Let's hear Barry Fowler. That's an interference against the defense. And we don't like to criticize the officials because we know they do 99.99% uh, of the time do a great job. But this one we have to disagree Watch with. Watch Andrew Jackson. You tell me he's at the lower part of your screen right now where the pass interference is. Where is it? He doesn't make any contact. The ball's past the defender. It, it was a tough angle for the ref to see right there. It looked like he might have put his hand on his back early, but it was by the angle that the ref saw. It's a close call in a big game like this. Something like that could make the difference. Absolutely. What that does is that not only does it get him a first down, it moves to change. Uh, sets up a, uh, the ball will now be put at the 30-yard line. First down and 10. After the Andrew Jackson pass interference penalty, ball handed underneath. Longo almost gets through, does not. Gain of about four yards on the play. Madigan on the tackle, Wasaki into assist. Good job by Madigan up the middle there. He absolutely just trips him up. Otherwise, he did have some real good blocks in the interior there. Otherwise, coming over was number two. I can't even say his name, Sol Malafanki. Madigan lucky to get a hand around the ankle and trip him up. And Don Madigan, what a play there. I didn't see that on the on, the, on our live telecast here, but great job. Shake, shook off a block and then dove back to tackle Madigan. Sets up a second down and five. Another handoff. Stop short. Maybe a yard or two at the most. Sets up a third down and four. Now, we talked about New Britain letting teams hang around. This is not a team you want to let hang around. If New Britain can stop them here and get three and out, or sorry, not three and out, but stop them here, they need to make sure they score. And looking at this replay, they're, again, they're running these powers and these leads. Mungo follows his blockers, but the line of Eric Olavasabi throws down his man, and they solidify the line of scrimmage. Sets up now a third and three at the Cardinals' 36-yard line. Clock running here, 425 remaining in the third quarter. Obviously, Coach Alban Albanzio is trying to run some clock here as well as gaining the yardage. Ball possession. Players come down, maybe a delay a game. We'll see. It was their movement. New Britain also, they kept doing the shift that we were talking about earlier. They like to shift with their defense. They, they had nine guys in the box right there. Didn't look like Greenwich was ready for it. And, uh, had to call timeout. It almost looks like. I'm sorry, Scott. I didn't mean to jump on you there. We're just waiting to see if Barry Fowler had the call. Good pick up there, Scott. 32 and 85 are moving at the same time. That's what they're trying to discuss. Is that legal or not? And that's it. It is legal. So? A lot of shifting and motion in these wing tees offenses. And let's give Barry Fowler and his crew credit there because if you do make a mistake and they felt they made one, they redeemed themselves right away there. And again, we don't want to... These are guys that don't do this as for a living. But good, do it in good a job, Barry. Do it in a volunteer capacity. Okay, that's going to set up now a third and three at their own 36-yard line. 4-16 remaining in the third quarter. The Greenwich crowd trying to get their team enthused. A lot of noise being made by them. The ball handed to Cobb. Cobb hit immediately. We'll see if there was a fumble. Hard to tell. That was Dan Perez. We saw Dan Perez a couple weeks ago against Bristol Eastern running a return one for a touchdown, and then two nights ago, or sorry, three nights ago, intercepted a, a ball on a big play as well. Dan Perez, the, out, the, there's the outside of the two middle linebackers, reads it, shoots the gap, and buries the running back in the backfield. Fourth down. Charlie Cobb did get hit 5'8", 175 pounds, and hit by Dan Perez. That's what you call smash mouth football. Small one now back to kick. At his own 23, bad snap. Was able to pick the ball up. Again, a bad punt. Out to the right side. Gonna let the ball roll. 
out about to 43 yard line and that's where New Britain will take over. 26 yard punt there and they've been struggling there in special teams. Steve we've been talking all game long how important special teams are not making mistakes. Talked about the blocked extra point earlier if that might come into fact. Right now it's a five point game. Could be, it should be a four point game. And things like that with a punting team. This is the last punt we saw down the right sideline was only about 30 yards. This one being 26 yards. It's things like that. You don't want to keep giving them good field position because eventually New Britain will attack and they will start to score more. You said that. And if you're also New Britain, you want to make sure that your punt returner, you're back deep to tell the guys, get away. You yell fire, fire to get away. And as you said, special teams are spe that's why they call them special because they make special plays and sometimes don't make special plays. Again, it's Davis in motion, ball handed to Harrison. Henderson, Harrison stays on his feet, gets some extra yards, about six yards. Let's go down to Tony. Tony, what do you have for us? And Tony, Guys, one thing I've noticed here on the field. Steve uh, jumping in for Tony. In the first offensive series for Greenwich, a lot of mumbling on the sideline by the defensive players about the constant uh, use of the run. Uh, on the next series after New Britain had turned the ball over, again, the body language was really low after an initial burst. Uh, Greenwich was the beneficiary of kind of a tough call by the officials on the interference penalty on Smallwood. He had moved before the snap. The official didn't catch it, and the ball was clearly pass Underwood after that. Uh, and I have asked, there is no backup punter for Greenwich, as uh, Tim Smallwood, rather, has really struggled averaging less than 20 yards a kick. Back up to you. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, we talked about Smallwood's struggle so far tonight. Both punts, or every punt that we've seen so far tonight, I'm sure not what, what Coach Albazano wants to see out of his kicker in a big game like this. Another first down there. We missed one run by Harrison as he got the first down. Look at that leap. Great block by number 51 to open up that hole, though. He buried the guy, the defensive end. Jordan Raynaud with a big block there. Now first down at the Greenwich 45-yard line, 223. Quarter going by very quick. Britain doesn't mind that with a five-point lead. Ball faked. Johnson now back at his own 45. Throws it deep. And Killis with the leaping catch down at the 12-yard line. And we saw Killis before do it earlier at the end of the first half. Here does the same thing. Johnson knows that he grabbed that ball and he throws it up there and Killis brings it down. Johnson had plenty of time. You see the replay here. He steps back. Nice play action. He's waiting, 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 waiting for his receiver. Receivers to run the routes, incoming the blitz here. He fires it off. Keyless with a great catch here. He actually stops to get into motion right where he needs to be. Leaps up and falls across. The lad you talked about going across the middle. That's twice now we've seen him be able to cross the middle. And Dan Taylor made a bad gamble, bad decision to gamble. He missed it. And, and this time Johnson pitches out left to Harrison. Harrison at the 11, the 10. Smallwood trips him up, gets down to about the 7. One thing I want to point out, what kind of guts do you have to have for Neil Johnson? Did you see the way he stood in the pocket there? Yeah, Talk about those guts. Man. That's why I let you make that point, Steve. He st you can tell his confidence is changing now, all going back to that throw. Look at this block by number 51, though. I just want you guys to see this. Junior Riado, whatever your name is. Great block. Look at this. Finishing a block. Buries the guy. Hits him so hard. Hey, he knocks Harrison down. <laughs> How do you pronounce his name? Reno, 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 Reno. You're making a, a, a Frenchman sound Italian line. But the, oh, look at this, Harrison on the run, brought down at the. They're going to call it the four yard line. It's going to set up a third and short. Atlanta's got the names down like so. What I can even say, small fall Sankey, but he can't get those nice French names like Reno down yet. Or Gil. <laughs> All right. Sets up a third and one at the six yard line. A replay. We see Harrison. Great job, number 56 on the hog tie. That's Peter Salvatore. Also good job, good patience there by Hairston here. Nice patience, wait for his blocks to happen. And then he cuts towards the other side and actually nice dive to get a few extra yards there. Keelis and Davis out right. Johnson's gonna quarterback sneak up the middle. Let's see if they, yes, put it on the board. New Britain goes in just like that. Neil Johnson on the quarterback sneak. Touchdown, another six on the board for the Golden Hurricanes. Now usually when we see a quarterback sneak, we always say Steve Young, Jesse Sapoli. This time it was a little bit different. There was a guy over there, and Johnson used his vision as you see him getting picked, <laughs> picked up by Coach Cochran because he knows he needs this man to win this state title. He used his vision to slide in. Great job. Garces on for the extra point. <laughs> Maestro with the hole. That one's blocked. No good. So after Co Coach Cochran was ex exuberant, they missed the extra point. Might come back to hurt him. 20 to 9, 34 seconds left in the third quarter. That is actually a big play there. Instead of going from a three three possession game, it's now a two position game. That's 11 points. So you go go the six, the two point extra convert, the two point conversion, and also get the three for the field goals. That's still just two tries down. We've got 34 seconds left here in the third quarter. It's still another quarter to go, Steve. 
the way that they have ball control over there in Greenwich, that could come to be a big factor. The big interior line, as we talked about, just created that hole. And that was great vision, as you saw in that replay. He just sliced in, looked to the right side, saw it, squeaked through the hole. Gar says, now we'll get ready to kick off. You get a look at the New Britain side. They are standing on their feet. You got to look at the big band for New Britain, the Connecticut's uh, well-known around the state of Connecticut, the New Britain band. Let's go down now to Tony Selaski. Tony, what do you have? Guys, momentum has clearly shifted into New Britain's favor. Uh, Greenwich has not faced this type of adversity all year, and their body language in the sideline clearly dictates that. I would fully expect New Britain to go for the jugular here. Uh, if they hold them three and out, uh, I would expect big play action from Cochran uh, and the rest of the New Britain team thereafter. Back up to you. All right, thank you, Tony. Back to receive. Looks like McClellan. McClellan out at the 15, gets tripped up. Be marked down out about the 19-yard line. Trying to see who that was who made the stop. Try to get it on the replay if we have one. But what now is Greenwich going to have to do? They're down 20 to 9, 27 seconds left. This is an offense that usually runs, although they did throw three touchdowns last week. What do you think? I think they're going to be out of their element a little bit because now you have a, you get a guy like Josh Jenkins, who's a younger guy, not as physical as the other defensive ends, but you get him involved when you have to pass because his motor is nonstop, as well as Andrew Madigan. You have some fast, fast defensive ends that you're going to have to deal with right now if you're Greenwich. And on that replay, you saw the leap to get to the 19-yard line by McClellan. Ball fake. Cabrera now looking out to his left. The same play they tried before. This time it works. McClellan gets the ball at the 29. Brought down. Looked like by number 35, Dan Perez. But that play you said, Aladdin, did work this time. Great recovery speed by Dan Perez. Otherwise, that's a huge game. What Josh Jenkins has got to do is put his hands up to uh, block the view. You're going to see Josh Jenkins a low defensive end on your right. Now, right now, young man, jump up. Even though the quarterback's lobbing. And you can see Dan Perez with a great read. He read it right away. Otherwise, it's a huge game, but put your hands up. Smart thing by the Reverend Perez. He knew that he was being beaten. He put his head down and ran to the spot that he thought it was going to come to. He wasn't just running after the guy. He put his head down and ran to it. And at the end of the third quarter, time runs out on the Cardinals. An 11-point lead. We'll see if Greenwich could get back into this ballgame. 20-9 to to lead for New Britain. Join us for the fourth quarter of the state final championship right after this. Almost half of all parents who suspect their child has a problem learning wait a year or more before getting them help. Why? When there's so much they could be achieving. Kids with learning disabilities are smart. They just learn differently. Call or visit us on the web now. Welcome back to Ken Strong Stadium. Congratulations, Steve. You finally got it right. <laughs> Thank you, Scotty. First down and 10 at their own 32 for the Cardinals. In the wing once again. Cobb gets the ball this time outside to the right. And the Golden Hurricanes all second half so far doing a much better job of stopping the run. Well, I'm having a hard time. Have a hard time hearing you. I think they're doing that on purpose to keep me down. What I said was Greenwich is going to have to, they're going to be out of their element a little bit when they run the ball because they're going to, the clock is against them with the style of offense that they play. Sends up a second down and eight at their own 34. Cabrera drops back to pass, throws out to Smallwood. Smallwood slips, makes a nice grab while going down, but not much of a game. Going to set up a third down and five. You almost kind of wonder here if uh, Cabrera is, you know, he's feeling the pressure a little bit. He is a first-year starter. He doesn't throw much. We know he can throw as he did against Naugatuck. We've talked many times about his uh, three touchdown passes. But here, clearly throws well behind his receiver. I mean, he was on single coverage there. He could have got some more room, maybe a little, uh, uh, some more rack for you uh, guys. A little terminology for you there. Some yards after the catch. New Britain's lucky that it was a bad throw because the defensive backs are playing so far off. That would have been a first down. The Cardinals have all their timeouts. Clock will be a factor. 10.50 now remaining in the fourth quarter. They're down 11, 20 to 9. Cabrera back to pass once again. Looks out, throws deep. Four white jerseys around McClellan. Nobody even close to open. Also had Nick Bastis out to his right. Great coverage by the Golden Hurricane. Great coverage, and I just bashed Mark Wozlowski because he was playing so far off. As you see him cheating back, but he's, he's baiting the quarterback to dare to throw because he's making a great break, and otherwise that was just a forced throw. But good job by Mark Wozlowski. 
Carrera actually had good coverage, uh, good protection there by his offensive line, but he didn't he didn't know. He was, he's not used to it. His people have been getting through. They've been that New Britain defense penetrates real well. And right there, he's like, oh gosh, I'm not used to having this much time, and he just threw the ball a little sooner than he really had to. Smallwood back to punt. And he fakes it. I said he was gonna might fake it. Smallwood gets hit hard. But it's a ball up with the emphatic first down. And you have to blame the New Britain front because you knew this is a state title game. There's nothing's going to be held back. Both teams are going to pull out all the stops, and they all bailed early. You got to hold your water. Look at the front line. Watch all the guys. No one's looking. As soon as they start leaving, that's when Smallwood just takes the ball and runs. And I like the way he Look finishes. Finish, Watch what yeah. he does when Look he gets at that up. Finish. That was Justice, Liberty. That was Justice Harrison who made that tackle. Usually, he's on the receiving end of tackles like that when he when they can catch him. Jack Cochran now running out onto the field to talk to his defense. Obviously not happy with what happened. Timeout, New Britain. And let's talk about that. I started to break up a little bit because I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. I said, there goes the fake. You could tell Smallwood thought about it for a second and then decided to run. Well, the thing is about that with Smallwood, they, first of all, they know his punt's been averaging 20, 25 yards at best. They actually had no pressure coming in on him there. They brought more of their people back so they could get a better return off of this because of the short kicks. And right there, he saw the hole and he, gets, he went with it. Now, the thing I don't understand is if you have a kicker that's kicking that bad, what you should do is put 10 or 11 guys, 10 guys up there, leave all of them upfield because on a low kick, that's a live ball. That's a dangerous kick, and you got to tell everyone to get away. You should try and blitz a guy who's going to fumble around with a kick, especially the way he's kicking. It's almost coming off his foot real low, better opportunity to block it. And we saw Smallwood struggles in the first half and here early in Earlier on in the second half, now 10-22 remaining. Brennan's gets a second life on this drive. Kyle in most, most in the backfield. Ball handed underneath to Longo. Longo with the two-yard gain. are going to have to do better than that if they want to try to get these points back up on the board. And that clock, you can hear that clock in the background ticking. Yep. So if you're Greenwich, you got to pay attention to that clock. It's a simple dive. There's no pull. Well, there's sort of a pull, but power play more. It's just a great job of Eric Obasuabi burying this, the guy who's on him cleaning up the rest of it. And they do have all their timeouts left. One good thing for Greenwich, the 9.50 remaining here in the fourth quarter, 20 to 9 in the state championship. It's been exciting all night. We're in for some more right now. Cobb out to his right. Great tackle there. That's number 48. We haven't called him all night, but I'm sorry, we have called him. Don Madigan. I made the mistake of uh, saying that we haven't. We did call Madigan. He was more pronounced in the game on Tuesday, but a great tackle there. He looked like Derek Brooks on that play. All he did was read it. We get in a little late. You see Don Madigan shoot the gap and bury him. And then you're starting to see that Perez and Madigan are taking more chances when they see this backfield action. That's what I was talking about. Guards making you look like a star as a linebacker. They're starting to show what and I mean by it. And it's time for new glasses for me because I thought that was number 49. But of course, of course, Don Madigan has been in on many plays tonight on the de defensive side. One of their standouts at linebacker. Ball handed underneath, and there again, he makes another play, stuffing Longo. Longo had nowhere to go. Madigan taking over in this drive right here. Madigan is just reading the guys, and he's doing what a good linebacker does. Scott knows as well as I do. A good linebacker makes the read. You read the backfield motion and just bury the backs. As an inside linebacker, your first responsibility is stop the fullback. Big play right here. Let's see what they're going to do. We'll see if they dare to attempt it again on a, uh, maybe a fake punt here. Al Bonzio, Coach Al Bonzio. I don't think they will. It's fourth and eight. Back to receive. Looks like Keelis. Along with Jackson. Jackson lets the ball get by him. Ball's going to roll. They're going to let it roll into the end zone. Smart play. It'll be a touchback at the 20-yard line for the New Britain Golden Hurricanes. 8-20 remaining here. Fourth quarter time becoming a real factor or Greenwich. It certainly is, Steve. Right there, small. You're talking about what's he going to do this time. You saw him. He actually took that extra second. He saw once again. Didn't have much pressure coming through on him. Looked around. Got a decent kickoff, but a heck of a good bounce for him. Sure did go back in there. The net isn't as good, but still ball in the 20. And you can bet your bottom dollar that they were going to try a reverse right there with those two guys back there. You know, you were, you were trying to get me on that one, Aladdin, and try to point that out. Let's see here. Johnson pitches out to his right to Harrison. Harrison has some room. Cuts back inside. Does a smart thing by staying in bounds. And sets up the second down at about four yards. While we have a moment here, let's thank our fine Nutmeg crew who have been with us all season. This Nutmeg telecast, a great crew. Producer Regina Mastro Giacomo, director Paul Fiedler. Regina also our TD, engineer Paul Fiedler as well. Camera, Ken Hicks, Art Langdon, Dwayne Cody, Paul Bistrack, 
Don Zorrell, our fine spotter, the producer of a great show on Nutmeg Television. That's it. A second down and three. The pitch out to the left to Harrison. Harrison tries to get to the outside. He does. Stiff arm. He has room. He's at the 50, the 40, 40, the 30. He may go in. One more man to beat. He does that. Harrison put it on the moon. The Golden Hurricanes have taken a, a big tough to overcome lead. Oh my God, did you see that Aladdin Freeman? Talk about, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut Aladdin off because, all right, sure, Tim Washington, okay. I'm gonna say Hairston now, okay? Talk about a complete run. Not only does he get the speed to cut the corner on the outside, but he also gets great blocks down the sideline by Mike Davis, and he's also got the cutting ability. He can stop and he's got misdirections and better than anyone I've seen in a while, Aladdin. Now, I bashed Mike Davis earlier for not holding his water and not making a good kickout block. Right there on the end of this run, he absolutely flattened the safety. Flattened him. Great blocking, a great run. Couldn't even get the words out quick enough because Harrison was just, once he got to the outside, steamed down the sidelines. Right in front of us here, going right to left on our booth. The extra point attempt now, right through the uprights. Garces, besides the one block, has been perfect the rest of the night. We get a look. Some of the Greenwich crowd starting to leave. 26 to 9, 726 left in the fourth quarter. And this a sound effect I'm going to make is the door shutting as Harrison gets a great monster kick out block. And look at him now. He's like a, a big Cadillac, a 67 Cadillac. He gets his shoulders back and he's gone. He gets those arms pumping. And we're going to miss the dynamite block by Mike Davis. But trust me, it is a monstrous block. Mike Davis is coming to your stream. Keep your eyes on him. Just watch Mike Davis. Forget about the great cut by Harrison. Look at this block. Oh. 73 is going to think twice about playing football. <laughs> Unbelievable block. Joseph Fuscaldo was a man who got hit. You see all three great things that you want to see in a run. There. You saw the power at the beginning, able to turn the outside, then you saw the speed, and then you saw great block. Three things that you need for a running game right there. Right on them. And I ask again, who's the best running back in the state? I think you might have swayed Scott Gustafson over. Scotty, I'm not well, going anywhere yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't take anything away, of course. Who's the best high school running back in the state? Though? There we go. <laughs> I think we have the Justice Harrison fan club being formed here by Atlanta Freeman. But now 26 to 9, 726 remaining. It's going to take a minor miracle here by the Greenwich Cardinals to overcome this lead. Don't worry, lad. Justice will be served. And the kickoff here. Garces with the kick. The ball touched by Daniel Anderson. Anderson then brings it back up, gets to about the 35-yard line. Now, one thing I want to jump in and say, as as you know, you guys, I'm a very whimsical chap. Uh, what I like about this touchdown run, a 73-yard touchdown run, is it's going to allow me to get out of here faster because half of Greenwich is leaving right now. You're right. And they are. They're leaving in droves right now. Leaving in droves are the fans for the Cardinals. This was a short squib kick, Steve, and they almost didn't pick it up. It's a good way to finish the run, but New Britain almost got the ball back. And then you would have really seen this place leave. You, you never see still amazing. He sets up now a first down and 10 at their own 35. And Cabrera trying to run outside, not able to. The ball's fumbled. It's still kicking not. around. Perez trying to grab it. He gets hit. Still kicking. Sapo Fanky picks it up. They're going to wave it down. And Barry Fowler emphatically saying that the ball was down. I don't even think they're going to give him the fumble there. Fowler saying that Cabrera was down on the ground. Not going to call it a fumble. Same right there. You're going to see half of the Greenwich fans over here just kind of looking, not reacting too much. Then you see a few of them kind of jingling in their pockets looking for those keys, just as Aladdin was saying. And Eric Obaslagi. Olabasi. Olabasi. Huge play. Huge takedown. He hit him so hard, he, he caused the whole fumble and everything. Eric Olabasi, we talked about him many times tonight. He comes in big there on that play. 26-9, New Britain with the lead, and they can start smelling that state title with 6.53 remaining. Watch Eric Olabasi. Just look at it again. He's beating, he beats the uh, with a, just a simple bull rush, and he body slams the guy down and causes the fumble. Caprera caught the ball up. Reverse. This time they reverse the ball. Short game, maybe five yards at the most, going to set up a third and long. The New Britain, uh, the New Britain band is just going nuts over there on the sides along with their crowd. And if they don't get burned with this reverse against West Haven before, I don't know what play this is, but this is a relook at Eric Oslogi slam Ola Bessie slamming and causing the fumble. And this was a live, but well, you could say that the ball came down, we got hit. I see the point. But on the on the next play, if they didn't get burnt a couple times on Tuesday, that play might have worked. 
Sets up now third and long. Cabrera scrambling, not going to be able to get out of it. Gets hit by three or four and piled on at the end by Josh Jennings. And Dan Perez emphatically calling to his crowd. A little extracurricular activity. Something we don't want to see in this, at the end of the state championship. Great sportsmanship all game. Under six minutes to go. We've talked about time being a big factor here. They're down 17. And first of all, we, we talked about the New Britain defense. Maybe if there was one weakness, what it is, it's throwing to the middle of the field. That's obviously what Cabrera is doing there. But they pick up the biggest strength about that New Britain defense is the penetration. They're able to get to Cabrera so they don't have time to pick apart their defense. And Smallwood now back to kick. Unbelievably right. He's, he's exactly right. As soon as they went up by more than by 11, you felt that it was going to be a lot of problems for Cabrera. Ball kick to Jackson. Jackson receives at the 39, slips out of one, almost falls down a flag on the play. Smallwood trying to bring Jackson down. Jackson throws his right hand. I'm sorry, that was Daniel Anderson. Flag on the play. We'll see what the flag is. Unfortunately for Smallwood, one of his better punts came at maybe when it's too little, too late. Well, it looked like New Britain had a reverse On a return. Was a clip on the play. It looked like they had a reverse set up, but the kick was so short that Andrew Jackson couldn't get to Quinones. Here's a replay of the kick. You're going to see Andrew Jackson come at the bottom part, the bottom left of your screen. He actually looks back, he realizes that they're so far away. And I don't see the clip. Oh, there's the clip right there. This guy, number 27, Josh, Josh Jennings. Jennings. Josh Jennings. Who's been a standout, so no. can't get on Jennings too much, no. but had the reverse set up. That's a play they've used throughout the season. Keyless, usually the receiver on the uh, on the reverse, Scott. One thing you almost can get on right now is that Jack Cochran bandwagon did a great job with Bloomfield eight straight years making it into the playoffs, a title run of four straight years. It looks like he might be starting new something from New Britain here. First year as coach of the Golden Hurricanes, and he's only 5-14 away from a state title for New Britain. He's got lucky to walk into a situation with a running back like Harrison, too, though. First down and 10 for New Britain at the, their own 22. This time just takes a, takes a knee, running to the outside. That time was Harrison, kind of slipped on a turf. And at this point, I kind of hear in the in the headset that the fat lady is starting to get ready in back of us. It's either that or that was the phone call from the president about to con uh, congratulate to Britain. <laughs> yeah. And while we have a second, let me finish our fine thanks to our crew here at Nutmeg. Don Zero is our spotter, CG operator, Alex Bystrack. <laughs> And, What's that name? Uh, Ford director and Regina. Regina doing that as well. Audio, Ron Palmazano, who does a fine job. Especially the entire year. three of us here. And replay operator, Michael Roy. Thank you to all at Nutmeg Television for another great season of high school football. Man in motion. Ball fake to Harrison. Gets hit hard. Kind of left out to dry there. I don't know if it was a busted play or what happened, but was hit hard by uh, Paul Peter Salvatore. This is going to be a, a bootleg, and somebody, something of the leg or the boot didn't work because he gets bottomed up. Looks like he couldn't get the leg in the boot of Latin. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. The boot was a little too too small. Timeout here called by Greenwich. No retreat in Coach Alba's, Alba Zeno, and of course, you wouldn't expect there to be. I mean, this is a proud team, 10-0 throughout the season, Greenwich. They came in here with hopes high. New Britain has dashed those. It's 26 to 9, 418 remaining here in the fourth. It almost goes to the fact we talked about here in the open tonight, Steve, how Greenwich is a very similar offensive attack as they were uh, to West Haven, which uh, New Britain saw on Tuesday. And that really did help out New Britain tonight. They were able to adapt. I'm sure, they had a few problems early on in the first half. They really did settle down, and real, the defense really did respond. And that's basically what this team has thrived on all year is this black shirt defense, is what they've called themselves. And there's no, there's no substitute for a great running backs, great skill players. You can have a team that maybe like might not be across the board as good as the other team, but if you have a great running back, great quarterback, great receivers, you're in every game. Now third down, third down and 20. Here for New Britain, they're at their own 11 yard line. Brennan with the timeout, trying to save some time. Johnson fakes to the left, runs out to his right. Has a hole there, but gets a good gain. Not enough for the first down. And went out of bounds. Not something that Jack Conklin wanted. But the smart thing there, they did get room. If they were going to punt here in fourth down, he got about 10, 12 yards. Party, 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 end zone. And doing something stupid at the end. You see here. See Johnson rolling around to the right. He says, hey, I don't need to throw. Don't need an incomplete pass. I'll just clock the roll a little bit. He takes off himself. Comes down the right-hand side. Gives his kicker plenty of room here. And Garces has done a good job of punting all day. Unlike Tim Smallwood on the other side for the Cardinals. 
Carson has a strong foot. He's back at his own 12-yard line. Back to receive is number 21, Brett John. John will catch it at the 45 and hit immediately. Hit hard by Dan Perez. First time we saw Brett John tonight. Caught the ball. Maybe the last time we see him after that hit by Dan Perez. <laughs> great job there by Perez. He, he knew the ball was coming down. Great hang time there. A nice kick. It's always a good thing when you don't pick apart your punters. That means they must be doing things right and not doing them wrong. And Perez absolutely rolling over him there. And let's go down real quick to Tony. Tony? Tony, what do you have? Steve Pryor, 1976, the state of Connecticut did not have playoff games, believe it or not. When the CIAC instituted this format, they had to have this atmosphere in mind. Word from the gate is over 7,500 people here tonight to see one heck of a game. With four minutes left, New Britain uh, probably one hold here, and they have the game in hand. As you may know, they came off a championship in 1992 with a team led by Tabucky Jones, uh, who now plays for the New England Patriots. Greenwich, who has five titles in their back pocket, one of which included Steve Young in 1981, uh, has played a tough game tonight, but their, their, their lack of passing game has really hurt them. Uh, 340 left to go. Let's see what happens, but uh, looks like your Britain has things well in hand. Back up to you. And thank you, Tony. Good nugget there about Steve Young. Uh, they could use Steve Young here tonight. Cabrera just been too shaky back there. Uh, too much responsibility for him. First year starter, and just when the pressure's on, they're making him try to throw too much. And uh, this new Britain defense is ready for him. And this time he hit, he hit John. John did recover from that Dan Perez hit. That time with a quick pass out, gain of about maybe eight yards. It's going to be third and short. John, right back in the game, though. No quitting Andrew Jackson, even though they're up big. Look at him, he's going to finish this. He really wants to body slam him. But good job of keeping the feet moving. You've got to respect that young man. Don't call the dogs off. Let the coach do it for you. Sign of a well-coached team. Played to the very last second. 2.56 remaining. 26 to 9 in Britain with the lead. Won't be long before they're holding the state title here in 2001. And John hit hard. I'm sorry, that's not John. That was Longo on the carry, and he was hit hard immediately. Again, I tip my cap to Madigan and Perez. Now they got it down. They understand. Read these guards, and they're going to make plays. He just absolutely buried the running back in the back foot again. Perez has come up big as we wind it down here in the second half. Tony's point about Steve Young. Steve Young, great history there for Brennan's 1981 when they won their title. Steve Young, their quarterback. We talked about Jones for back in 92. Quarterback sneak here, just trying to get the first down. Josh Jennings jumps way up along with Andrew Madigan. They're going to call it a first down and 10 now for Greenwich. We talked about this New Britain defense. Coming into the season, they lost seven defensive starters. When uh, Coach Cochran came over, he thought that was going to be a major concern. He knew he had a young team. He knew he had a talented team, but he just didn't know how well they'd been tested yet. And obviously, you can see him here tonight making it this far. That they've been tested. They've responded well. They have a lot of guys coming back. The one thing they're going to have to find, though, is another running back, another stud running back. And, of course, Neil Johnson will graduate as well. So Ma Maestro, Andrew Maestro, is going to have to be the QB. He's only a sophomore. will be a junior next year. Cabrera out to his right. Receiver fell down. That was Brett John, who pounds the turf. Wysocki and Perez in. Little extracurricular activity. You don't want that again in the waning moments here of the state championship. Real quick, we, oh, let's get a replay in here well, first. This, this, this quarterback, Cabrera, is done, now you see why he doesn't like the pass because he's getting popped every time. He short hops it. What are you going to say? He just gets, when, the, when you have to pass and the team knows what you're going to do, they're going to release the hounds on you. Andrew Madigan in there. Along with on the, the pressure. Samuel Fanky, or however I'm going to say his name one of these times. Samuel Fanky. Samuel Samuel Fanky has a great speed. Cabrera back again to pass again, gets pressured. Throws over the middle, intercepted. Andrew Jackson at the 30, run the ball up to the 40. Cuts back, 42 to the 45 to 50. Another cut, eventually brought down at the 44-yard line of the Cardinals. Andrew Jackson playing to the last second, as you said, interception. Great job there by the Golden Hurricane defense. And I'm telling you, Coach Cochran has a nice base to build around with Andrew Jackson coming back with Josh Jennings. Andrew Jackson's going to sit back. He's the, he's the far left corner. He's just reading Cabrera's eyes. He jumps the route. Look at him jump the route as he gets a lot of nice help. Step. Nice step. Nice hit by I don't know who. And then the rest of this just him being an athlete. Shake and bake. He ends up getting about 20 yards from where the initial interception. And that was Marcus Mitchell who made the hit. Here's the cuts by Jackson. He's got to learn how to tuck that ball away a little bit, but yeah. great, great job by that young man. 
He was consumed by uh, the red jerseys there at the end of the play. The Golden Hurricane Band celebrating, waving goodbye to the Greenwich side as we get pounded here with many, I don't know what these are, many t-shirts being thrown out by the cheerleaders here uh, for Greenwich. The referees talking things over. Greenwich calling a timeout. 132 remaining, 26 to 9. Very close to the state championship for New Britain. One thing you're going to see is the class move by Cochran. He's bringing all the seniors out right now. Maybe they're going to be the ones to kneel down this clock. Healis, along with Mike Davis, come off the field. And a very nice thing there. And I'm sure he's going to do the same for Justice Harrison. Maybe after they sit on the ball along with Neil Johnson, who are both seniors. Cochran now walking off the field. And get a look at the Cardinal for Greenwich, who's crying a tear as they have gone down here in defeat, unfortunately, for the Greenwich. But again, nothing to hang their heads about. A great season for them, getting all the way to the state final. 10-0 record on the year. You get a look at them on the sidelines. I'm sure they're going to be upset. Harrison with a run out to the right. They're going to run the clock here. The Cardinals are just two years removed from their own state title, and it's about time for New Britain to have one. The first one, as Tony said earlier, since 92. And they're going to use Don Madigan now, Steve Moore, as a fullback. You're going to watch. And they do a lot of things. They're using him more as a traditional fullback, good kickout block. Harrison keeps his feet moving. I don't know if you want to keep your star in this late. The chance of an injury. As oh, and Jack Cochran just got doused with water. <laughs> Jack Cochran gets doused with the Gatorade. Doesn't seem to be too happy about it. <laughs> he got doused from behind. One of his players came up, and there's ice all over the field. Maybe that's what he's not happy about. Johnson now going to hand the ball off. Outside right goes Harrison, and maybe that's why he's going to go right into it. And they do, and that's what Cochran didn't want. It's exactly why. Yeah. You see Coach Cochran there getting all over his team, both yeah. on, hey, you know, you gotta got to keep away. That's where injuries happen. You really don't want anything like that to happen. And you see Lewis Pratt's over there trying to trying to sweep some of it away a little late, but it's things like that, just a little thing. You think you're having fun. And, and Jack Cochran now jubilant on the sideline. 22 seconds. That was probably the last play. They won't even have to kneel on it anymore. New Britain, you can say it now. New Britain, the class L, double L, state champion for the state of Connecticut. And there they are. They're jubilant on the sideline at the 7, 6, 5. The clock's going to run out. And how can, I mean, I've never had the experience, but the excitement, and here come the, here come the team out onto the uh, field, and the fans. Look at the excitement out there. Jumping on each other, some of the fans coming out onto the field. You see the despondent Greenwich Cardinal team being talked to by some of their assistant coaches and lining up for the traditional post-game handshake. They're going to let, as you've seen in hockey in the Stanley Cup Championship, they'll let the team celebrate and then they're going to shake hands at midfield. It's a well-deserved time, Steve, to celebrate. They really did go out during this one. First half is a lot closer. I mean, if you look at the scoreboard, it says 26-9. The game was a really a lot closer than that. And Britain at the end, simply too much. We on too much too late. And unfortunately, Greenwich not able to come back. Again, the final score, 26 to 9. Greenwich unable to muster a comeback in the second half. We're down 14 to 9 going into the second half. 12 more points added by the Britain. See the band playing on with the rest of their fans as they stand and don't want to leave here tonight after this victorious state final for New Britain. New Britain again, the champion for the Class L section of Connecticut. The final score here, 26 to 9. We'll be back right after this with Justice Harrison, Coach Cochran, and hopefully Neil Johnson. Join us for that interview right after this. This is my brother Omar. Well, there was a hole in his tummy. A bullet hit him. I saw red grass. The gun was in the garage. I didn't mean to shoot daddy's gun. I didn't mean to shoot daddy's gun. Hey, Jill, what'd you do? Huh? What's your time? <laughs> 
Welcome back to Ken Strong Stadium. We're here with the jubilant New Britain state champion. Let me say that, state champion, New Britain Golden Hurricane team here. Let me list who's here. We got Elfrin Keelis, Dan Perez, Jordan Raynault, of course, Justice Harrison, and Eric Olabasi, Olabasi who've been many, most of the key members of tonight's game, although they all deserve an interview tonight. Can't get everybody, though. Let's start with you, Elfrin. State championship, just your feelings, and what are you feeling right now? This is one of the greatest feelings in the world. You know, we've been busting our butts all year round, and, you know, it feels great to be number one. Elfrin, great game. Let me get to the rest of the guys, too. Uh, Dan Perez, big on many tackles tonight in the backfield a lot of the game. Uh, we knew you faced the West Haven team and ran the similar offense. Did that help in tonight's uh, preparation? Yeah, it helped. Uh, we got our reads off, kind of. Got our reads last game and carried over to this game. And we just played great team defense. The offense put some points on the board and won the game. What does this mean to you to be a state champion? This is the best feeling in the world. I never won a state championship, even in midget football. Now I get to come my senior year and go out on top. So it's great. And, of course, these guys are very happy along. Scott is along with Jordan Raynault and Scott. Jordan, first of all, I mean, you guys have to be absolutely excited here. I mean, you guys coming in here this season, you guys defensively, we'll talk first, lost seven starters from last year. I mean, you guys knew you had a big, a big hill to climb to begin the season. Yeah, we had a lot of, we worked a lot all over the summer. We worked hard all season to make up for losing all those people. And like all the, everyone's been stepping up, even the younger kids like Andrew Jackson's a sophomore steps up. Everyone who, who needed to step up, stepped up and we won the game. Certainly did. And uh, offensively, I mean, we, w one name I'm just going to say, Justice. You did justice here tonight by, by far. I'm sure you've heard that plenty of times. I mean, you got to talk about your performance out here tonight. I mean, big game. You just really turned it on. Every player in big games need to step it up, like my offensive line did today. Um, you have a great back, but none of it would be possible without fakes and receivers. You know, you need 11 guys on every play, and that's what we had out here today. I wouldn't score any of those touchdowns without all those 11 guys putting in 100% every time. First of all, Coach Cochran, very offensive-minded coach, coming in here this year, coming from Bloomfield. You guys knew about his history with state titles. Yeah. I mean, begin the season, were you guys already scheduled in the state down in your calendar? Um, when he got the job, he called me, and he said, you know where December 1st is? And of course, I knew what it was, championship. He said, that's where we're going. And uh, right then and there, we stuck by each other. Everybody worked together, and look where we're at. State champs. State champs, and obviously, I mean, you've you got to be pretty excited about this, too. I mean, what, what sticks out most tonight in, the, in your mind about tonight's game? I'm going out with the bang. It's my senior year. We won it all. I'm going out with the bang. This is the greatest feeling in the world, and I love it. It's Wild definitely got to. It's definitely got to be a good thing, Steve. And Scott and Aladdin, we were happy. I know we were happy to see this team come through tonight. We followed these guys all year. Elfrin, one thing though, before we let you guys go, I hate to start talking about next season already, but people are going to start saying, "Can they repeat?" You're back next season. Jordan, of course, is back as well. The other guys are finished. What's it going to take to repeat? I know it's early, but uh, what are you going to go look into next season and start trying to repeat? Well, what we're going to do is just like, you know, have, like we've been starting from the get-go. We're going to we're gonna work hard, and it isn't like we have a break. We have two weeks off, and we're right back at the weight room, lifting weights and running. Jack Hockman will not let these guys rest. Guys, one last chance, the hoop and holler. State champions, New Britain, and Aladdin, anything you want to <laughs> well, add? Well, one quick thing. What happened in the, second, in the first half, they rushed for about 150 yards. You were monumentous, both of you guys taking away the running. What happened? Our defense had to step it up. We had to do what we had to do and step it up as black shirts. We had to represent. With a black shirt, you got to hold it down and represent. All right, last question. Do best. <laughs> best back in the state. We got an argument up in the, up in the booth. Are you the best back in the, in the state? Well, you guys see my performances. Um, I'm going to let the people adjust for themselves. Um, like I said, the best back play in December. Best back in the state. That's all I have. Um, and if any team want to play us, we'll schedule a little scrimmage or something that in the season. Fitch, Bloomfield, anybody else that want a piece of us, four quarters, we'll bring it to you. I know it's cheesy, hard-hitting New Britain. Justice has been served. Guys, let's hear it. <laughs> yeah, number one in this state. Number one. 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 Number